Well, under oath, you may continue your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, I believe you indicated that on July 31st, 1989, you were in uh, Tampa, Florida? Uh, yes, I believe so. And was that at the Harry Hopman uh, Saddlebrook International Tennis uh, Club? I believe that was the name, yes. Okay, and you were attending some kind of a um, school there? Uh, I went there to um, play tennis, uh, to train for Kalamazoo and to visit my Aunt Martha. And when you were there, do you recall during that period of time that your brother was also there? He, he may have been there that time, uh, may have been the time before. I really don't have a great recollection, but it could have been that time. Now, would you describe for the juries uh, what the setup was like uh, at this camp? Did you have your own room? Uh, yes, yes. Every uh, you, you actually you, sh you shared rooms. Um, you had uh, roommates, and then there was the uh, professional tennis side where a lot of the professional tennis players played, and then there was the camp side uh, where uh, a lot of the juveniles played, and I played on both sides. Do you remember staying in Complex Four? I don't remember the... The, the um, arrangements uh, were set up that you would have roommates? Uh, yeah. I, the first time I went there, I had two roommates or one roommate. I don't, I don't remember how many roommates. Um, and, uh, and then whatever time Lyle was there, I, again, I don't remember. Uh, Lyle and I stayed by ourselves. And there was a kid named Toby that used to hang out with us. Okay. So you would stay in the same room as uh, your brother? Yes. Well, there were, there were separate rooms, but the same uh, apartment. Okay. Did each room have its own television set? I have no idea. Do you remember uh, watching television while you were there? Uh, no, I don't. I remember watching TV and a, uh, uh, a video camera that we um, had over there. We would tape tennis and watch it, and, uh, and so on. So there was, there was a television set yes. available? Yes. You don't recall whether it was in your individual room? I don't know. Was there a television set for the complex? That is some kind of a room that was shared by all of the people that had rooms within that complex? There was a television set, I believe, in every apartment. It was a country club, and I guess the name was Harry Hopman's rented part of it, and they rented these individual apartments. And I guess every apartment had a television set. I don't know if I guess you're talking about a day room. I I don't I don't remember. Do you recall the uh, the room number that you stayed in? No, I have no idea. Yeah, I have a two-page uh, document from the Harry Hopman uh, Saddlebrook International. Tennis Club and giving copies to each council. May I have that marked uh, exhibit next in order? 277. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, I'm going to show you what's been marked as uh, exhibit 277. I ask you to take a look at the uh, two pages of that document. Oh, the two pages, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Mr. Menendez, does that refresh your recollection as to whether you and your brother were at that camp on uh, July 31st, 1989? No. It does not? No, I don't quite understand what it is. If you could just explain it to me. I, mean, it well, could... not, I would object to having it explained. Well, that's... counsel, at this point, your client asked a question, and uh, it's up to the prosecutor to ask another question. Mr. Menendez, asking you to take a look at uh, page two of uh, exhibit 277. Uh, does that indicate uh, your name on that? Overall. Oh, yes, yes, okay. That's right. Do you understand that part of it? Yeah, I didn't know you were referring to the name up here. Yes, then it does. Okay. And with respect to taking a look at this document then okay. and taking a look at uh, the dates uh, thereon, does that refresh your recollection as to where you were on July 31st, 1989? Yes, on July 31st, I suppose. It's not accurate. I wasn't there August 4th. Okay, I'm asking you... But on July 31st, yes, it does. Okay. Now, as to the first page, sir, does that refresh your recollection as to whether your brother was there on that date as well? 
Yes, it does. Okay, and, and was he there also? Yes, he was. Okay. And uh, furthermore, sir, with respect to the complex where you and your brother were staying, uh, does that refresh your recollection as to which complex that would have been? Complex four. Same complex? Yes. Mr. Menendez, with respect to the uh, date of August 18th, 1989, you had indicated that you had a uh, meeting set up with uh, Dr. Ozeal on that day? Yes, I did. And you indicated that you had uh, canceled that appointment? Yes, I did. Do you recall when it was that you canceled it, and did you cancel it personally? I don't. Uh, I'm not sure if I canceled it personally. I believe it was after Tuesday that I canceled it. And was it the policy that as you understood it that if you canceled on what they called short notice that you would be billed for the uh, session? Uh, Dr. Ozeal usually billed me uh, for whenever I had a session and whenever I canceled it, whenever it was short notice or not. Did you actually talk to Dr. Ozeal's uh, secretary when you would uh, make an appointment or cancel an appointment? I believe so. His secretary's name was Sandy, and uh, I believe that I spoke with her personally. I don't know if I did on that date, but uh, that's how it would go about. Okay. May I approach your honor with the exhibit uh, 97? Yes. And I'm going to show you what's been uh, marked as exhibit 97. It's a part of the package. It's a 97A, B, C, and D. Okay, are you familiar with these? Not completely, but if you could just show me where to look. So with respect to 97A, that would reflect the 1988 visits, is that correct? Uh, yes. And with respect to uh, 97B, do you see the entry for August 18th? Yes. And does that indicate that you canceled uh, the session on short notice? Uh, yes, it does. Did you cancel that uh, session on the, that day, that is the 18th of August? I don't remember. It was between Tuesday and Friday that I canceled it after I spoke with my brother. Was it the day that you actually went to San Diego that you canceled? No, it, it wouldn't have been the same day. It may have been Thursday, if that's what short notice means. I really don't know. Now, you, you felt that uh, you wanted to talk to uh, Dr. Ozeal about something on the 18th? Uh, yeah, I, well, not on the 18th. I felt I wanted to talk to him on, uh, I think it was Monday, uh, the... Fourteenth, that I that I made the appointment with him. Sometime between Sunday and Tuesday, I made the appointment with him because I wanted to talk to him about this problem. You had a good relationship with Dr. Ozeal, and you wanted him to help you out. Overall, uh, no, that's that's not the reason. Um, I, I don't know what kind of a relationship I had with Dr. Ozeal. I just what my dad told me on Sunday was was such a uh, a hard thing for me to be able to handle. I just felt really uh, terrible, and he was the only one I saw to talk to. Now, this question I, I've been requested by the uh, Beverly Hills Police Department to just specify. Objection, Your Honor. Okay, why don't you just ask a question? Okay. I know we've gone over, sir, about the uh, Mulholland Drive where you um, deposited the shotguns. Yes. Would you, when you were heading on Mulholland, were you go? Which direction were you going? I went up Cold War. Three fifty-two. It's a discovery question. Yeah, 
overall. Thank you, Your Honor. I went up Coldwater uh, and we made a left. Left on Mulholland? Yes. Now, when you uh, got out of the car, did you go down a hill, um, which would have been on the passenger side, or did you cross the street to the other side? No, the hill would have been on the passenger side. So if you're going down Mulholland, the hill went down toward the valley side. Uh, that's where the hill went down. And you had indicated that there were big trees in that area? Uh, yeah, I just remember all sorts of uh, forest all around on both sides of the road. And on the other side of the road, did the, uh, the hill go up or did it also go downhill toward the L.A. side? I don't remember it going up, um, but I, don't, I can't be positive about that. Uh, now, Mr. Menendez, you had indicated that uh, your mother throughout your life would help you with your schoolwork? Uh, yes, she would. And she would help you to fill out applications? She did my applications. Okay. Um, asking you to take a look at the photograph on the board, uh, Exhibit um, 7. Do you see the, the paperwork, um, the, the uh, letters that are near your mother on the floor? Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things there. Um, when you turned on the lights after shooting your parents and, and wanting to go back to pick up the shells, did you notice what those letters were? I didn't look. At some time later, did you, uh, when you came back and your brother called 911, did you actually went in to see your parents again, didn't you? Yes. And at that point, did you see uh, what your mother uh, had uh, next to her as she lay there? Object to the form of the question. I didn't care what she had next to her. I just I wanted to see them. You know, I have a, another uh, photograph. You have that marked as 278? 278. to be the uh, area of the coffee table indicated in the middle of this photograph, sir, the uh, Exhibit 7? Yes. That photograph? Uh, it appears to be, yes. Can you see what that is that uh, was next to your mother, the, uh, the letters? Uh, how to enroll, uh, attend without obligation, some sort of parking, uh, registration, etc. And where is that from? I assume it's from UCLA. Does it, in fact, say UCLA there with respect to the parking? Yeah, right on the park. Okay. Now, you've testified, sir, that uh, your mother was going to kill you that night, correct? Yes. And that's still your belief, is that correct? Still my belief to this day? Yes. Well, if I, if I knew they didn't have any weapons when I walked in the room, I would not have walked in the room. Um, I, I don't know what my belief to this day is. Um, no, I, I can't be sure that that's my belief to this day. Now, if your mother had been planning to kill you, would she have been filling out your application for UCLA? Objection, Your Honor. It's already mandated calls for speculation. Sustain. I have nothing further at this point, Your Honor. First, I want to call your attention to page two. If 277 has your name, uh, page two has your name on it. Is that right? 
Yes. What is 277? Do you know? I have no idea. Um, it says... Well, don't tell me what it says. Do you have any idea what that is? No. Have you ever seen something like that before? No. Then how can it refresh your recollection about anything? He was saying that this reflects my recollection. I... No, no. The question is, not can you read the document, but does it really make you remember something that you didn't otherwise remember? No. Let's first take through the one that's in your name, okay? All right. Now, it's a series of dates, is that right? Yes. Dates for what, can you tell? No, I have no idea. Now, the date of August 9th, for example. Do you know where you were on August 9th? Yes, I... Were you at Harry Hopman's in Wesley Chapel near Tampa, Florida? I was in Florida. Where were you on August 9th? I believe I was in Chicago or on a plane back to Los Angeles. What day did you come back to Los Angeles from Chicago? August 9th. So you couldn't have been there then, could you? No. And August 4th, 1989, do you know where you were that day? Yes. What were you doing that day? I believe I was playing tennis in Michigan. Kalamazoo? Yes. So you couldn't have been there on that day, and that shows up in this document too, right? Yes. Now, August 3rd, how'd you get to Michigan, by the way? I uh, flew to Michigan. In a commercial airplane? Yes, I believe Do you so. know what day you flew to Michigan? No. Okay. So this says August 3rd. Do you think you were there on August 3rd in Florida, or do you think you were on an airplane to Michigan, or do you think you were in Michigan on that day? I believe August 3rd was the uh, date that the tournament started. The tournament in Kalamazoo? The registration date. Okay. And were you there to register? Yes. So on August 3rd, you were in Michigan? Yes, I'm sorry. So... Objection sustained. The answer is struck. Where were you on August 3rd? I was... I'm sure I was in Michigan. I was in Chicago the day before, so... So does it tell you anything about where you were to see the date of August 3rd on this document from Hopkins? No. Let's go to the one for your brother, then. Now, again, you, you see that on the top of this document, they have some dates there that say arrive and depart? Yes. Now, were you at Hopman's on July 20th? Do you know? I know that I wasn't. Where were you on July 20th? I, I believe that was the time when the clay courts were being played in Tennessee. In Louisville? Yes. So on August 20th, you believe you were at rest strike that. On July 20th, you think you were in Tennessee? Yes. Kentucky, actually. Louisville? Yeah, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes, I was in Kentucky. Quito, Peru. Uh, by the way, do you know what Quito is while we're on the subject? It's in Peru. No, it's in... Did you ever hear of Quito, Ecuador? Yeah, I guess it's in Ecuador. Capital of Ecuador. Did you ever learn that in geography lesson? Not that I remember. That's okay. You're in good company. Now, on... Um, so on July 20th, you're not in Florida? No. So this, how could it tell you anything about who is in Florida on July 20th if you're not there? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, so the fact that it shows July 20th on a bill under your brother's name, that doesn't tell you your brother's there either, does it? No. Now, let's go to the bottom of this record. You see August 10th, 1989 on your brother's supposed record? Yes. Where was your brother on August 10th, 1989? Uh, he was in California. And where were you? I was in California. And you saw him on August 10th, didn't you? Yes. And on August at least 4th, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, you are where? I'm in... Uh, Michigan. And when you're in Michigan, Mr. Menendez, do you remember having any contact with your brother back in California? Yes. So do you think that, per, do you believe your brother was in Florida when you were in Michigan? Or was he in California? Or do you know? I don't believe he was in Florida. Okay. Now, on what basis, um, what basis do you have to say where you were on July 31st before you ever saw these records? Just my own uh, recollection that I was one of two places. Okay. You recall that you played in a tournament in Kalamazoo, correct? Yes. And do you recall that just before you went to that tournament, you were in training? Yes. And was Hopman's the place where you trained? Uh, if that was the name, I, it was Saddlebrook. 
Yes, yeah, Saddlebrook Way, exactly. Hotman's. Saddlebrook's the country club, isn't mm -hmm. it? Hotman's is the name of the tennis camp that's on the grounds of the country club. Yes, I can't be sure that I was there on July, any of those days, though. You know you were there before Kalamazoo? Yes. Now, did you also, while you were in Florida, visit your Aunt Martha? Yes, that's why I can't be sure. Uh, and Aunt Martha lives um, in Florida? Yes. She doesn't live in Tampa, does she? No, she lives about two hours outside of Tampa. Well, she lives, where does she live? She lives in West Palm Beach. Okay. Um, and at any time during that um, training period before Kalamazoo, did you visit your Aunt Martha at her home in West Palm Beach? Yes. And do you now remember on what day or days? No, it was, uh, it was soon after her birthday because I, I remember that uh, she had somehow found out where I was and uh, called me to say that I missed her birthday and that she wanted to see me and so I slept overnight at her house. Okay, if I could have a microphone. Uh, he was a, a great tennis player, I believe. Uh, founded that camp in Florida? I believe so. Now, did you also attend Harry Hopman's tennis camp in Florida before you played in the tournament in Louisville? Yes. And in fact, when you went to the tournament in Louisville, did you have with you clothing you had purchased at Hopman's? Yes. T-shirts and stuff? Yes. Mm -mm. I'm trying All right, to let's just continue and go on yes. to something else. All right. Well, it's complicated. Now, Mr. Menendez, you were asked about making an appointment to see Dr. Ozeal and then canceling it. You recall that? Yes. And you testified just a few minutes ago that you wanted to talk to him about this problem. Yes. And were you going to tell him that your father was molesting you and that it wasn't going to end as you had hoped and prayed for three years? Mm, definitely not. You actually sustained the answer struck him. What was the problem that uh, you were going to discuss with him had you seen him or that you intended to discuss with him? That I no longer wanted to live. That you what? No longer wanted to live. Had you ever seen any other therapist? Uh, no. Did you know that your mother was seeing a therapist? Yes. And did you know how it was that you wound up being directed to Dr. Ozeal? Yes. And how was that? Uh, I, through my mother, through my mother's therapist. And did you know what his name was? Yes. What was his name? Lester Summerfield. And had you received information after your parents died uh, that your mother might have left something with uh, Dr. Summerfield? Yes, I did. And what was that information? Just that she might have left a, uh, or the, she might have left a letter uh, with uh, Lester. That your mother might have left a letter with Lester? Yes. Did she refer to Dr. Summerfield as Lester? Uh, she referred to him as, as uh, her closest confidant, Lester. And did you know when she was alive who that was? No, I, I, uh, I don't even remember if I knew the name Lester Summerfield before she was alive or after. Well, how did you... The question was, how did you get to Dr. Ozeal? From her, is that what you said? From her therapist, yes. Okay. Did you know it was coming from her therapist? Yes. So you knew she was seeing a therapist? Exactly. Yes. Overall. Now, where did you receive the information that uh, Dr. Summerfield or Lester might have a letter? Uh, from a suicide note that she had left um, that I found afterwards. A suicide note you found afterwards? Yes. Now, you had found a suicide letter of some kind in 1986. Isn't that what you've already Yeah, I like? found another one in 1986. In when? In 1986. You found another one in 1986? I found the first one in 1986. 
within a, a few days of your parents' death, a number of your relatives came to California. Yes. And was one was one of those relatives your father's mother, your grandmother? Yes. And uh, was your grandmother at the Beverly Hills house right after your parents died? Yes, yeah, she stayed there. She stayed there? Yes. Did everyone else stay at the Bellage or the Bel Air Hotel? Yes. Did your grandmother stay at the house by herself or did anyone else stay with her? There were so many relatives uh, there that I don't remember if anyone else stayed with her. You did not stay at the house during that week, did you? No. Now, can you just describe generally what your grandmother was doing, particularly in those first few days, at the house after your parents died? She was going. Objection sustained. Well, you were over at the house. You just didn't sleep there. Yeah, so let's ask it in leading fashion. Were you over at the house during that week? Yes. Were you over there uh, more than once? I was over there every day. And did you see your grandmother when you were over there every day? Yes. And what was she doing there? Uh, she was going through everything in the house, um, specifically my parents' uh, things. And what was she doing with things as she was going through them? Uh, she was segregating them out, uh, putting some in uh, here and putting some in there. Was she taking things out of the house? Uh, no, I don't, I don't believe she was taking uh, anything out of the house. I know she did eventually. She, she sort of took over, and uh, nothing left the house without her permission. And um, you, you weren't allowed to do things. All right, let's start with this. You say she took over. How, how soon, how quickly after she arrived did she take over? Immediately. And you said you couldn't take things out of the house. Are you referring to yourself or to other people or both? Uh, to basically everyone. And um, what about, you said she was looking primarily for things of your parents? Yes. And was she, where was she looking? In my parents' bedroom. Was she looking in other parts of the house as well? Yes. Now, Mr. Menendez, you heard testimony of other witnesses that uh, there was in your house in Calabasas, for example, many, many, many boxes that occupied the living room area. Yes. And uh, were there boxes somewhere at the Beverly Hills house? Yes. Boxes from previous moves? Yes. Uh, what was your mother's habit and practice, Mr. Menendez? When you'd move from one house to another, would she unpack all the boxes or would she keep some packed or what? Uh, she'd keep most packed, and they sort of got more and more boxes as you went along. And was your grandmother going through packed boxes as well? Yes. Now, you testified um, at some point you were concerned that your grandmother might find something in your father's closet that you didn't want her to see? Yes. And I think you testified you took those things out of your father's closet? Yes. And I think you indicated that a cousin or cousins got rid of it for you? Uh, yes. Now, Mr. Menendez, when you were arrested in March of 1990, where were you living? In Marina del Rey. And did you, on that occasion, also request the help of a cousin or cousins to get rid of something? Yes. And on that occasion, when you were arrested, do you know which cousin you specifically asked? Yes. And on that occasion in March, who did you ask? Uh, my cousin Andy. And had you been with your cousin Andy for some period of time, uh, been together with him when you asked him to do you this favor? I, uh... Well, let me, let me read question, ask you. You testified you flew here from Florida. Yes. Who flew with you? Oh, Andy flew with me then, yes. Now, when you got here, on this flight from Florida. Did you have an opportunity to go back to your apartment? 
No, I was taken from the airport um, by Detective Zoller to the Los Angeles County Jail. And you never had an opportunity to go back to your apartment, I take it? No. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you had asked your cousin Andy to get rid of something from your apartment? Some reading? Yes. Now, did you, what did you expect to happen to your possessions in your apartment when you were arrested in March of 1990? I expected my, uh, them to, to be, they did, my relatives to go through it and, uh, and store some of it and they box it and so on. Where was your grandmother living in March of 1990 when you were arrested? At the Beverly Hills house. So she was living here? Yeah, oh, yes. Did you have any expectation with respect to your grandmother having any contact with your personal possessions in your apartment? Yes. What did you expect? I expected that her, um, my Aunt Martha, and different people to go through my apartment. And was it in anticipation of that that you asked Andy to get rid of something? Why did you want Andy, without describing, why did you want Andy to get rid of something? Um, be, because there were some things in my apartment that I, I, I wanted Andy to get rid of before my relatives saw. Okay, so there were things you didn't want them to see? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, did Andy do that, get rid of these things by himself or with the help of someone else? Uh -huh. Well, Your Honor, it has to do with his state of mind. It's not being offered for the truth. Well, I'd like to be heard on this. Okay. Now, you testified that there were these things removed from your father's closet, and you had asked who to remove those from the house? My cousin Henry. And to the best of your current recollection, was An did Andy help Henry on that occasion? No. To the best of your current knowledge, did Henry help Andy on the second occasion? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, did your cousin Hen Henry, during that week after your parents died, get rid of the things you had given him to get rid of? Yes. Did you ever see, did you ever see those things again? No. It's noon, Your Honor. All right, uh, we'll recess until 1.30, ladies and gentlemen. Don't discuss this case with anyone. Don't form any final opinions about it. We'll resume at 1.30. Yes, previously marked 279 and 280. We've shown Show me the photograph that's been marked 279. Okay, would you look at that? Yes. Okay, who's that in the photograph? That's myself. And where are you? What city or town are you in when that photograph was taken? Uh, Kentucky. I'm in Wendy's. And what city? Louisville. 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 Right. And you were there for that particular tennis tournament? Yes, I was. And do you remember these tournaments based on the surface of the <coughs> tennis courts you were playing on? Yes, I do. And what surface was being played on at Louisville? Clay. These were the clay courts. And if you would look at the lower right-hand corner of that photograph, does that photograph have a date on it? Yes, it does. And what was the date? Uh, July 27th, 1989. Now, one other thing before you give it to me. Are you wearing a t-shirt in that photograph? Yes. And where is the t-shirt from? Uh, Saddlebrook Country Club, Harry Hopman's. From Hopman's. Mm -hmm. Now, is it your recollection that you were at Hopman's before this day of July 27th, 1989, when you're wearing the Hopman's t-shirt in Louisville? Yes, I was. So let me show you 277 again, this document that Mr. Kuriyama showed you. Do you see any dates on this document um, that would cover the period when you were there, when you obtained that T-shirt? No, there, there are not. Okay. 
Now let me show you this other photograph, which is 280. Okay. Yes. And uh, who's in that photograph? Uh, my mom and my dad. And where was that photograph taken? I believe in Kentucky as well. In Louisville? Yes. And what kind of place was it taken in? At a hotel. And is, is this inside a hotel room or is it inside the dining room? I and mean, where is it? I think it's inside the hotel room. Did you all stay in the same hotel room? No. And where did you stay uh, at this hotel in relation to your parents? I stayed in the next room, next door. And did your father, during the time you were in Louisville playing the clay course, ever visit you in your hotel room? Yes. For what purpose? For uh, sex. Um, suggesting to you that your mother was only five feet two inches tall? Yes. Well, I have another document and I'd like to mark it uh, next to the order. No, not next to the order. I'm sorry. I'd like to mark it 291. 291. You have some other documents that you'll be marking? They're already marked, Your Honor. A series of photographs in between. Thank you. Mr. Menendez, you recognize this to be an enlargement of your mother's driver's license? Yes. And do you see the height that's indicated on that driver's license? Yes. And what height is it? 5'5". Five, five. And do you see the date of birth, October 14th, 1944? Yes. Was October 14th the day of your mother's birthday? Yes, it was. Was she born in 1944? No. When was she born? In 1941. Did your mother lie about her age? Objection calls for speculation. Sustained. Did you ever hear your mother lying about her age? Yes. Was your mother older than your father? Yes. By how much? Overall. Three years. Now, Your Honor, I have a series of photographs uh, marked 281 through 288. Actually, I have them marked through 290, but I'm only going to use the 288 at this moment. Mr. Menendez, you've testified that on August 18th, you and your brother went to a store in an effort to buy handguns. you recall that? Yes. And you testified that you went to the Big Five in Santa Monica. you recall that? Yes. Mr. Menendez, when you testified to that, did you know where the Big Five in Santa Monica was? Uh, I thought I did. Where did you think it was? Uh on Santa Monica Boulevard, uh, one or two blocks away from the freeway. Okay. And if I were to tell you that the Big Five in Santa Monica is a mile and a half from the freeway and it's on Wilshire Boulevard, okay, would you accept that for the moment? Yes. Now, when was it that you, let me ask you this, from the day that you went to this store where you inquired about handguns, um, until the day that you were arrested. Did you have in mind that it was a big five store? No. As of the day that you were arrested, did you realize or know that the store in San Diego where you had bought guns from was a big five? No. When was it or what occurred that made you understand that it was a big five in San Diego where you bought the shotguns? Uh, when I read about it in the paper. And after you were arrested? Yes. Now, over the course of the three years that you've lived in California, have you frequented sporting goods stores? Yes, of course. Do you always go to the same chain or the same type or the same one? No, it doesn't matter. 
What different chains or types of sporting goods stores have you gone to over the three years that you lived in California? Uh, Sports Mart, uh, Turner's, Hoshman's, I know I used to go to Herman's a lot, Sears. And um, Big Five? Big Five, of course. Uh, I don't even know the names of all of them. Okay. And you went frequently to such stores? Yes, I used to play tennis, and so I'd go there a lot. Okay. Now, which was the stronger memory, if you can compare them? The memory that the store was on Santa Monica Boulevard, a block and a half from the freeway, or the memory that it was a big five? <coughs> that it was within a block and a half from the freeway in Santa Monica. Do you know now where that store, the store that you looked at guns was? No. Now I'm going to show you some photographs. Starting with 281. The question is, does 281, what's depicted there, look at all familiar to you? Yes. Yes. Does it in any way resemble the store that you believe you were in on that Friday, August 18th? Yes, it does. And drawing your attention to what's in the center of that photograph, uh, what does that appear to be, this object? Uh, those are handguns in a glass case. Now, would you look at the next photograph? Is that a slightly closer view and a better color photograph? Yes. And does that case appear similar to the case in the store that you were in on August 18th? Yeah, it had several levels. Now, you recall testifying earlier that the top level had handguns. Yes. You recall testifying earlier that the handguns you saw it did not have the revolver part, in other words, the cylinder part. Yes. Would you look onto the next, let's go two down. Let's go to this one. Look at 286. Do those appear to be the kind of non-revolver guns that you saw on August 18th? Which, which one? They both appear, no. No? No, they, uh, they do not have revolvers. I didn't hear the question. Okay. If you don't hear the question, just say you don't hear the question. Let's look at 286, this one, okay? Do you see the guns on the top row? Yes. Do those appear to be the same shape guns that you saw on August 18th? This yeah. This picture, Mr. Williams. Yes. Okay, now you want to look at the next one, so go ahead. Those appear to be the same shape guns as the one you saw on August 18th. Objection. There's no foundation for this. We will tie it up. Objection overruled, uh, but stop uh, leading the witness. Ask, ask him in a different fashion. Right. Okay. Yes. Did these appear similar? Yes. <laughs> the ones that just went up are 86 and 87. Now going back to 283, in that photograph, are there different things on the different shelves of this glass display case? Yes. What's on the top shelf? Handguns. And I would like to, like to show you 284 next. Do you see what's up on the wall in that photograph? Yes. Now, do you have any recollection in this store that you were in on August 18th to seeing long guns? Yes, there were a, a rack of them behind. Does that appear at all similar to what you saw in the store on the 18th? Yes, it's very similar. And this is 284. Now, do you recall whether or not there was ammunition behind this glass case? Yes, there was. Showing you the last two photographs, 285 and then 288, okay? 
Does that appear to be similar to what you saw on August 18th? Yes. Now, Mr. Menendez, what the guns that you are looking at that you've seen in these photographs, are they real or are they fake? Uh, apparently, they're not okay. real. What do they look like to you? They look like real handguns. Okay, you know where these photos were taken, don't you? Yes. Looking at these photographs, can you tell if they're real or they're fake? No. Where were these photos taken, Mr. Menendez? At the Big Five in Santa Monica. And do you know when these photos were taken at the Big Five in Santa Monica? Uh, sometime between Friday and today. Between last Friday and today? Yes. Do you know if the guns that you saw on August 18, <coughs> 1989, if any of them were in fact real? I, uh, I believe that they were. You believe that they were, but do you know if they were? No. Did you handle any of them? No. Did anybody take one out of the case? No, I said before, no one did. Did anybody put ammunition in it? No. Did anybody show you how to operate it? No. Did anybody describe to you what the make or manufacturer or caliber or type or model of the gun was? I don't remember that. You don't remember it? I don't believe they did that. They didn't take it out of the case. <clears throat> now, what is the thing that most stands out in your mind about this trip to a store on August 18th here in Los Angeles. What is it that most impressed you about that trip? That we couldn't get handguns there. And why, and why couldn't you get handguns there? Because they didn't have handguns? Is that what you understood? Sustained. Why was it you couldn't get handguns there? Because there was a uh, two-week waiting period. Now, you have described in part some conversation with the clerk. Is that right? Yes. How many people were taking part in this exchange with the clerk? Uh, my brother, I, and uh, the clerk. Were there any other customers around or engaging the clerk's attention during the time that you or your brother were in front of the glass case? Yeah, I believe there were all kinds of people around. And were you having a continuous conversation with the clerk, or was it a series of brief conversations. Uh, it was not a continuous conversation. He was distracted. Now, do you recall whether or not you asked him any specific questions about any particular gun? I just remember the one specific question that I asked. And what was the one specific question that you asked? Uh, I asked if one of the guns, I pointed to one, was a uh, uh, a real gun. And what was his response, if you can remember, to that specific question? Uh, he said that it wasn't, that it was a BB gun. Now, do you recall making any <coughs> assumptions at that point? Objection being overall. Excuse me? Do you recall in your mind making any assumptions at that point about any of the other guns? At that point? Uh, I don't remember. Do you recall making any assumptions at any point about any of the other guns? Yes. And what assumption did you make about other guns? I assume that they were real. Now, Mr. Menendez, do you remember the exact words that you used in your conversation with the clerk when you indicated you wanted to buy a handgun? No. Do you remember the general gist of, the con of whatever it was you said to him? Yes. What did you say to him? I told, her that we needed, I told him that we needed to buy a, uh, a handgun for 
uh, protection now, today. And do you recall what general, well, do you remember specifically what this clerk said back to you or just the gist? I don't remember specifically what he said back. I never did. What do you recall, though, being at least what you got from what he was saying? Like I said, I don't remember the conversation um, back and forth, but I know that he told me that you could not buy handguns um, in one day. Did he say you can't buy that gun, or did he say you can't buy a gun like that, or any words to that effect? Did he say that immediately after you had said you needed to buy a handgun for self-protection? I'm sure that I indicated that I needed to buy it right then. My question was, did, did he say it after you said something about self-protection? Protection. Did you, you just testified you said something about self-protection, is that correct? Yes. How soon after that did the clerk say, there's a two-week waiting period for whatever he said, guns like that, that gun, a gun? I believe right after. Now when you testified about this last Friday, do you recall saying that you couldn't remember clearly, but you remembered looking through the case at the different guns? Yes. Do you remember testifying that the three of us, meaning yourself, your brother, and the clerk, were talking, but you don't really remember? Yes. Do you remember testifying in response to another question? Um, this was last Friday? The last Friday. That you didn't remember the conversation, that you think you were talking about what the guns were. Do you recall that? Yes. That you asked if you could buy one now? Yes. Now, Mr. Menendez, looking at that rack of long guns, if you look at the upper right-hand photograph. OK. Do you know if any of those are real or fake? I'm not sure I know anything anymore, but uh, I believe no, that they are guns, real. Anyway. I believe that they are real. You believe all of them in that photograph are real, is that correct? I don't know. I, I, I thought that some were real and that some were not. Some what were real? Some of the uh, shotguns and uh, long rifles. You said you believed some were real and some were not. When are you talking about? When did you believe that? At the store. And you believed at the store that some of the long guns were real and some were not real? Overall. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. And did you believe the same about the handguns? Yes. Now, Mr. Menendez, are you aware of the fact that there is a big five store on Sepulveda Boulevard near the, the 405 freeway? Yes. You're aware of that since when? Uh, since this week. Are you aware of the fact that there is a sports mart on Sepulveda Boulevard near the freeway? Sustain. Mr. Menendez, are you identifying these photographs with certainty as the place where you bought, where you had this inquiry about guns, or as a similar looking place? It's similar looking. At this point, do you know where you were when you had this discussion with the man about buying a handgun? No. Just to uh, complete the series, Your Honor, let me show you these two photographs. Do you know where that is? I'm not sure. Just put it up. Right, this is just a view of the street. And it reads uh, with a blue street sign, Franklin and Wilshire. And that is exhibit? Two. 89. Now I'm going to show you this other photograph, which is 290. 
You can see what that is, can't you? Yes. What is that a photograph of? Uh, the Big Five Sporting Goods Store. Okay. Do you, can you tell from the photograph which Big Five it is? No. You want the record to reflect this bears a street number of 3121. <clears throat> Mr. Menendez, to change the subject, you recall being shown on the witness stand a record of your Department of Motor Vehicle history. Yes. Now, you recall testifying that you had lost your driver's license and that you had received a ticket for driving without a license in your possession on July 7th, 1989. Yes. And you recall on cross-examination you told Mr. Kuriyama you had also received a ticket for driving without a license in your possession on June 30th. Yes. Uh, have you seen that DMV record again? Yes. Now, what year, June 30th, did you also receive a ticket for driving without a license? In 1988. And did you lose your driver's license more than once? Yes. You testified that on the night of August 20th, you changed your pants from clothing that you had in your car. Recall that? Yes. Why did you have clothing in your car? Because it would pile up over time. Why would it be there in the first place? Because I would change uh, to and from the tennis matches. Often tennis matches were in Long Beach or far away. And uh, I'd bring the clothes with me. Okay, will you change after the tennis match? Sometimes I'd change in the car. And would you change into street clothes? Yes. So why would street clothes pile up in the car? Excuse me? Because Why did street clothes pile up in the car? Because I would change when I went to tennis matches. Oh, you change when you'd go to the match? Yes. Okay. And would you change after the match also? Sometimes it depended. Mr. Kuriyama indicated that in one of the rooms of your home there was a Martin Luther King poster. You recall that question? Yes. Who bought the Martin Luther King poster, Mr. Menendez? My brother. Where did he buy it? Uh, I believe in Venice. When did he buy it? Uh, I believe the week before. The week before your parents died? Yes. And in your home, was this poster just propped against the wall, or was it framed and hung? I don't believe it was hung, but it was uh, up against the wall. I was going to take it with him to college. Do you know a young woman named Tracy Baker? Yes. Was she a friend of yours or a friend of your brother's? Uh, she was a friend of my brother's. In the fall of 1988, do you remember an occasion when Miss Baker was at your home in Beverly Hills for dinner? Yes, I do. And did something unusual happen? Uh, yes. And would you tell the jury what happened? Uh, uh, she was overeating dinner. Um, and uh, my mom was serving. Apparently the maid was off or something like that. And uh, we were all sitting down at the table and um, my mom uh, had served dinner and my dad pushed the uh, tray away, uh, this plate, toward my mom and uh, spilled something and uh, told my brother and I to get up from the table. Did you Specify, uh, again, it was this in the fall of 1988? Yes. Now, do you recall whether or not your father said anything to your mother as he pushed the plate away or at any time during this? Yes. What, uh, what did he say? It's not being offered for the truth, Your Honor, but for the defendant's state of mind. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, he looked at my mom and, uh, and then he said uh, something like, what did you do to the food? or uh, what are you up to, or something like that. Okay, now did you understand what was going on? Yes. Only for his state of mind, Your Honor. What, Mr. Menendez, did you believe was going on? I believe that my dad thought my mom poisoned the food. 
Was this the only time that this sort of thing happened, where your dad pushed the food away and left? No. And on the other occasions when it happened, would he say anything to your mother? Yes. Now, did you eat at home um, your mother's cooking when your father wasn't around? Yes. And how would you know to eat the food or not eat the food? I would normally eat the food unless I thought something was very wrong with my mother. I, you could usually tell what my mom's mood was or what she was up to by the way she looked or a different sign she'd give you. And were there times when you, without your father's prompting, would not eat the food because of either a look or her mood or something she had said? Were there times when you didn't eat food when your father wasn't home? Yes. And what was the basis for your refusal to eat food on those occasions? Sometimes she said earlier in the day that she was going to poison us all, and so I wouldn't eat the food. And sometimes it was just my belief that she might have done something to the food. Now, on this particular occasion, we'll strike that. Do you ever recall this happening, your father <coughs> refusing to eat the food and asking your mother this sort of question, when there was a stranger present apart from this time? No. And on this occasion when Miss Baker is there, what happened after your father <coughs> said something to your mother? Uh, we left. He told us to, to get up from the table and uh, uh, Lyle, I, Tracy and um, I don't believe anyone else was there, uh, left. We went out to eat. You and Lyle and Tracy? Yes. Anybody else? I, I don't remember. How about your father? Well, of course. My dad's the one that told us to get up from the table. Okay. So you and your father, Tracy and Lyle, went out to eat? Yes. What did your mother do? She stayed home. Have a moment, Your Honor. You testified um, that you were very concerned when you learned in May of 1989 that your father was talking about disowning you. Yes. Okay? Now, what did disown mean to you? Death, that he was going to kill me. And why would disowning you, cutting you off altogether, mean death? Well, it was um, just my impression of what it meant, uh, because he clearly wasn't going to disown me. I don't understand why you say that. Why wasn't he going to disown you? Because he, goes, he wasn't going to let me leave the house. Why? Obviously. Well, because obviously the things that were going on between him and I, he was never going to let me leave the house with that information. So he wasn't going to let you take the secret away? Is that what you Yes. You say he wasn't going to let you leave the house. What, would have, what do you think would have been his fear? That I, was, I would eventually tell someone, um, or that I would have told someone out of anger toward him or something like that. So when you heard this talk about disown, what did you imagine happening? Uh, that he would kill me. Now, Mr. Uh, Kuriyama asked you something about wanting to kill your parents. On August 20th, 1989, Mr. Menendez, did you want to kill your parents? No. What did you want? I just wanted the sex to end. Is that why you shot them, to end the sex? No, at that point I just wanted to live. And on Tuesday, when you talked to your brother, did you want to set in motion a chain of events that would result in your shooting your parents? No, definitely not. What did you want by talking to your brother on Tuesday? I wanted the sex between my father and I to end. Now, in the fall of 1988, you've testified that there was an act of sodomy between yourself and your father in which he used a knife. You remember testifying about that? Yes. It's just a follow-up to this line of questioning, which was prompted, Your Honor. Do you wish to be heard at sidebar? Yes, if you wish. Did I have an answer to the last one, Your Honor? Well, 
let's see if we have a question in mind first. Will I ask it again? Yeah, I'll ask it again. Mr. Menendez, you recall testifying that in the fall of 1988, your father sodomized you in an incident involving a knife. Yes. And uh, how did you feel after that? I felt awful. I, I, uh, I couldn't wait to get to college. And did you tell your brother at that time about the molestation with your father? No. And did you have any thoughts at that time about having to kill your father or your mother or anything like that? No. And in May of 1989, you've testified, was the last time your father sodomized you. Was yes. that a pleasant experience? No. And did you tell your brother about it at that time? No. And did you have any thoughts at that time that you wanted to kill your parents or you might be forced to kill your parents or anything like that? No. How did you cope with these things, Mr. Menendez? I thought about the future. And what was there in the future that you believe helped you to cope with this? That I would uh, be able to get away from my father that the sex would end. Okay. And what was going to be the vehicle for your getaway? College. Now, what was it that you felt after the conversation that you had with your father that Sunday where he told you he expected you to be sleeping at home several nights a week? I felt like uh, my life had, uh, had, had crumbled. I, it felt like something that uh, I read in a book. You that felt like something you read in a book? Yes. What uh, book? Do you remember? Well, tell us. What, what is it it made? Tell us what it is that it I, made you feel like. I felt like I was, uh, I felt like I no longer wanted to live. What, what, what is it you read in the book that? It was about a, uh, uh, it was about a, a man in a concentration camp who, uh, in Nazi Germany who thought he was going to get released on March 30th uh, of, a, of a date, I don't remember. And uh, on March 30th, he, he wasn't released and he knew that he wasn't going to be. And uh, on March 31st, he died. And you felt like it was March 31st? And how did you feel that Sunday after your father told you that you'd still have to come home? I just related to that a lot. I felt like um, the hope in the future was gone. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Any examination on behalf of... Uh, Co-defendant? No. Any recross? Thank Mr. Menendez, you recall the testimony of your brother on September 17th, wherein he stated that you and he had gone to the Big Five store in Santa Monica? Uh, never mind. I just want to know which September 17th you meant. Uh, I believe he said that. And he had testified in front of these juries that you and he had inquired about handguns in that Big Five store in Santa Monica, correct? I don't know. If he did, then he did. And he further testified that uh, you and he were in the process of buying a handgun when you were told you weren't going to be able to leave the store with the handgun. Do you remember that? Uh, I know he, uh, he testified to that, yes. And that it would take two weeks? Yes, that's what I mainly remember. And do you recall testimony that you gave on September 27th? That I recall better. Volume 94. And this is a, a question by your attorney, Mrs. Abramson, in which she asks you, on Friday, did you hear your brother testify that you went with him to a gun store, a big five in Santa Monica? And you responded, yeah. And inquire about buying handguns, yes. And were you told that there was a two-week waiting period? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Did you do that? Yes. Do you remember all of that? 
Yes, we did do that. That's exactly right. Okay. You remember testifying on October 1st regarding the Big Five in Santa Monica? What day is October 1st? It was a Friday. Last Friday. Yes. Do you remember testifying about the uh, Big Five store in Santa Monica? Objection, Baker. Overall. With you questioning me? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you remember testifying that you saw the handguns in a glass case? Uh, I, I believe I said that. If you could show me the testimony, then I'd be able to uh, clarify what I said. Can I put you on? you have it there? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sixteen thousand four hundred eighty-five. Take a look at your testimony. Yes. Yes. Now you testified that you saw handguns in a glass case, correct? Yes. And you identified them as being handguns, correct? Yes, they were. Do you remember? Page 16,486. You remember testifying, sir, that you asked if these were real. Do you remember that? Uh, yes. And do you remember me asking you, and what did he say? That is the clerk to the store. Yes. And you stated, he said he pointed out which ones were and which ones were not. I believe the ones that were not were over to the right that is the pellet guns or the BB guns. I believe they were over to the right. And the real ones were more in the center where I was. Do you remember making that uh, can statement? I, can I finish the paragraph? Yes. I said, that's my recollection. I could be wrong. But that is my recollection. That you saw real guns, and he told you where the real guns were. That I could be wrong about, but that I saw real guns, yes. I, when I left that store that day, I believe there were real guns to this day. And at some point, you picked out a handgun that you thought was appropriate. Is that right? And you answered yes. Do you remember that? Yes. And you testified further that as soon as we said, that one looks good and that type of thing, we talked about, could we get it now? Excuse me, Madam Correct? Counsel, would you cite where you're reading 16,488. Yes, what line? Line 9. Do you remember? I would object if that's misreading the testimony. Do you remember testifying in that way? You can look at the testimony yourself. Would you like me to read the paragraph? Go ahead. Okay. Um, your question, too. Uh, you said, do you recall the caliber that you decided on? And I said, I, I don't really. I, no, I really don't. I wasn't. As soon as he, we said, that one looks good, and that type of thing, we talked about, could we get it now? What is... How do you go about buying it? That's when he's, he told us we had to, there was some sort of waiting period, I, and so I didn't. It wasn't an in-depth discussion. And you indicated to him that you needed to buy two handguns, correct? Uh, I believe that's what I indicated to him. And you remember him telling you that you could not leave the store with the handgun, correct? Overall, that's a question. If you could show me it, I'd did you did you testify to that? That I could not leave the store with the handgun. I don't believe so. You don't recall testifying that mm. way? Objection, Your Honor. There is no such testimony. Okay, okay. counsel. Uh, it's just an objection. Not an evidence. Yeah. Okay. Objection overruled. Was, was a question. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you remember, sir, me asking you the question on page sixteen thousand? Five store on the morning of August 18th to buy these handguns. Your answer, definitely, definitely without, without a doubt, I did. Yes. And you, you and Lyle did. And you answered yes, correct? Uh, yes. And then the question was, and you and Lyle actually looked in this case, and you selected these guns, and you were told you couldn't leave the store with those handguns because there's a 15-day wait, and you answered yes. Yes. And then the question was, Mr. Menendez, did you know that Big Five stopped carrying handguns on March of 1986? And you said, no, I don't know that, correct? Well, that wasn't the end of the, the, my answer. 
Do you remember making a statement, sir? I said, no, I don't know that, Mr. Kuriyama. There were guns there. We did look at them, and, we, and he did say we could not carry them anymore. So you couldn't carry them out of the store that day? No, that's not what I said. Sir, are you now trying to tell these juries that it was a pellet gun you were looking at that day? No, uh, what I'm saying now is that I still believe that there were handguns in the store that I went to. And whether the store, I'm saying now that I was wrong about something, the store that the Big Five was, was not on Santa Monica Boulevard, one or two blocks from the freeway. The store that I remember going to was, but if I did go to the Santa Monica Big Five, I still believed that they carried handguns, and apparently they didn't. So. Uh, my impression was wrong. Do you remember testifying that the Santa Monica Big Five store was the closest Big Five to your house? I, that I knew of, yes. So you had been to the Santa Monica Big Five store before? Uh, I don't remember being so, but I'm sure that I did. Because you testified that you knew where it was. You knew it was the closest one to your house. I knew that it was the closest one to my house. I didn't know there was any near my house closer than that. The man at the uh, Big Five store in Santa Monica told you you couldn't leave the store with those handguns, correct? I don't remember exactly what he said, but my impression was that we had to wait two weeks. That was Are you my now impression. saying that you're assuming that that's what he said? Excuse me? When you were questioned by your counsel, you said that you assumed that they were real, wherein you had testified that he had told you that they were real, and you said the real ones were in the center where you were, and the fake <laughs> ones were off to the side, correct? No, I said that that's what my impression was, but that I could be wrong, is exactly what I said. You were... But it's still my impression. You were told... Those are real handguns you were looking at. And now that you know that Big Five didn't have real handguns, you're coming up with a different story, aren't you, sir? Sir, uh, I described exactly where Big Five was to you. I described exactly where it was. I knew you could easily go and check it out. I'm, I wasn't lying to you. I still believe that the gun store that I went to carried handguns. When I left that store, my impression was that they looked exactly like real handguns, that they were real handguns. That's what I thought when I left the store, and that's what I thought when I testified. You shocked me when you said that there were no handguns there. I thought you also meant there were no anything that looked like handguns there. And my impression is now there were real handguns there. That's what I believe. You testified that, in fact, the clerk had told you there were real handguns, in fact, told you you couldn't leave the store without uh, waiting for 15 days with that handgun, correct? Objection asked to answer. No. No, that's not exactly what I said. I testified that the clerk said that these are real and that these are not. And I said, I believe that's what he said. And I said that he testified I couldn't leave the store without waiting 15 days. Sir, if there weren't real handguns in the store, you could have bought any one of those pellet guns, correct? And you left the store that day. I don't know what the what the uh, waiting period is on pellet guns. Well, is there a waiting period on BB guns and pellet guns? What I'm saying is, I don't know if there is. Now, he would not have told you that you had a 15-day waiting period unless you were talking about hand, real handguns, uh, correct? That's cost for speculation. In fact, you had seen, or you testified, you saw these real handguns. Yes. And that the, the clerk told you you couldn't leave with the real handgun unless you waited 15 days. Isn't that true? I don't, I'm, in that paraphrase, I don't know how I could answer that, but my memory is that I had a conversation with the clerk and that Lyle was there and that there were other people around and that we had a discussion about real handguns and I believe to this day that the guns in that glass case were real and that he said that we had to wait 15 days to buy a handgun. Were you imagining this? No, I wasn't imagining it, sir. It's still in my memory. It's still there, and uh, that's what happened. Now, you've uh, had about a week to think about what you're going to tell these jurors to explain how you lied about this. Objective. I didn't lie. Ar Argumentative.
objection sustained. Praise the Lord. Have you been discussing this uh, with your brother? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for hearsay. Overall. Uh, certainly I did. You I... talked about how we're we going to get out of this one? No, I'll, I'll tell you what I have been thinking over the last week, if you'd like me to, though. Now, you've been thinking about what you can say to explain how there aren't any handguns at the store you said you were at. Is that right? No, sir. What I was thinking about... No question pending. Now, Mr. Menendez, you indicated that on August 18th you were suicidal, correct? Yes, I was. And you had a meeting. You had a meeting set up with Doctor. And you had a uh, session set up with Doctor Ozeal for that day, correct? Uh, I don't believe I did so anymore on October, August 18th. I had canceled it by then. You had decided that you wouldn't go to see Doctor Ozeal because uh, you had spoken to your brother and you decided that you'd kill your parents instead of killing yourself. Isn't that right? Definitely not. moment, Sean. <coughs> Mr. Menendez, you indicated that uh, your mother was as about as tall as your brother, right? I... No, I said that I thought she was three inches shorter than him. And do you remember me asking you whether you were aware that the coroner had measured your mother as five feet two, that I didn't tell you that that's how tall she was, but I indicated to you that the coroner had measured her at five feet two, isn't that correct? Uh, yes, apparently. Did your counsel misstate that? No. Yeah, did your counsel misstate the question when she asked you? Object to what his counsel said, Your Honor. Rephrase the question. Do you remember when your counsel said that Mr. Kuriyama said that your mother was five feet two? Your Honor, I would object to that as Apparently the coroner was wrong. Okay, was it, the question I asked you is whether you were aware that the coroner had measured your mother at five feet two, correct? The question that you asked? Me? Yes. Y yes, I believe so. I have nothing further to say. Mr. Menendez, you were anxious to tell us what you were thinking, so what were you thinking? Uh, when? When uh, Mr. Kuriyama asked you what you were thinking this last week after you realized that at least as far as a big five in Santa Monica, they don't sell real handguns, just things that look like handguns. So well, they're handguns, they just use pellets. Uh, I was thinking about how I could be wrong when I was quite sure that I was right. Yeah, well, you were quite sure you were right about your mother buying a gun at the Sports Mart that she bought at best, right? Well, I'm not doubting all of my memories. No, okay. she did do that. She did do that, but you had the name of that store wrong, too, didn't you? Yeah, apparently she bought it at best and not Sports Mart. Let me ask you something. In your family, if your father was asking you questions, and you didn't have complete answers with all the blanks filled in, what would happen to you? Do you have a habit and pattern and custom when being pressured for answers to do something? I'd like to be heard on this, Your Honor. You're asking why he answers something this or point? Asking if he has a tendency to fill in blanks. Rather than that, which is irrelevant, that's if he did here, with respect to this conversation with the clerk in some sporting goods store, okay? Yes. In your memory, before you testified about this, were there blank parts? Of course. Do you have a tendency with respect to answering that kind? Well, strike that. In answering those questions for Mr. Kuriyama, did you fill in the blanks? 
I, I thought... Objection vague. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the clerk said, but I thought that there were real handguns there, and so I, I thought that he said that. You thought he had actually said they were Objection. real handguns. Is that what you're saying? Objection sustained the answer. You thought he really said what? That they were real handguns, sir. Even though you didn't remember him really saying that? Objection sustained. Did you actually remember him saying that? I don't have a clear memory of, no, I don't have a memory of him saying those words, but I have a memory of discussing it, I thought. Mr. Menendez, do you know what it's like when people are having a conversation where one's talking about apples and the other one's talking about oranges? Is it possible, given your memory, that you misunderstood the clerk? It's, po uh, it's, it's possible, but I... It's possible. I... Did you believe that you were looking at real handguns? Yes. Did you mention to him you needed a gun for protection? Yes. You think a BB gun is useful for protection? No. Nothing further. Thank you. Mr. Menendez, you fill in the blanks and uh, you were kind of confused as to whether this was the big five store. Is that right? Is that what you're trying to say now? No, I don't, I don't mean to say that I fill in the blanks. Uh, I thought that we had a conversation um, about real handguns. I, I know that he didn't point to every handgun and say, no, that is real. But I thought that the other ones were real. I still... Now, you were saying that you might have been confused about which store your mother had bought a gun a year earlier, correct? Appa apparently I was. You remember that gun you said when your mother got it, you were hoping that she would kill your father with it? Uh, yeah, I yeah. was hoping that. Okay. Now, is it uh, your understanding that your brother was confused about buying or, or going to the Big Five in, San, in Santa Monica? And that yeah. your own attorney was also confused as well uh, as you? Know, I'm going to object on two different bases. So number one. All right, objection is sustained. Rephrase the question. Okay. Could it be, Mr. Menendez, that your brother, you, and your lawyer were all confused about the big objection, five store in San Diego and in Santa Monica? Objection sustained. Rephrase the question. Okay. Mr. Menendez, you've heard your own brother say that you went to the big five store in Santa Monica, correct? Yes. You've testified to that unequivocally. You said without a doubt, correct? That I went there. Uh, I believe that uh, without a doubt that I did. And, and your attorney even asked you the question, are you sure you went to that Santa well, Monica? She Big got Five that store? information from me. She wasn't there with me when I was looking at the handgun. So she wasn't confused? Object to what I was or wasn't, John. All right, just rephrase the question. Are you saying that your brother was also confused about this? Objection, speculation. Uh, no, my brother didn't know it was a big five before he testified. I told him that uh, two years ago when we were discussing, we were trying to figure out the store we went to in San Diego. And you're positive about that? Oh, I know that. Uh, he's, he's sure that we went there to look at guns. Okay. Uh, and he, he apparently remembers that we tr were in the process of buying it. I don't remember that. Thank you. I don't think you finished the answer. All right, then if you want to have the finish it, you can ask for it. Right. May I do it from you? Sure. Did you finish, Mr. Randall? Uh, no, I hadn't. Why don't you finish? I can remember where I was. Uh, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, you, you said two years ago your brother wasn't sure what the store was where you were gifted the handguns in Los Angeles? Yeah, he apparently thought it was... Uh, Jack, you mistakes the evidence overall. Yes. And you convinced him it was a big five in Santa I told him that that's absolutely what it was, because that's what I uh, had remembered it was. You did him a favor? No, I didn't do him a favor. I, uh, I explained to him how we got there in Santa Monica and how it was two blocks away from the freeway and how I was absolutely positive about that, and that it was the, Santa and it was the big five. Mr. Menendez, do you believe the 405 freeway is in Santa Monica? I thought it was. Um, I have a clear memory of what... The question is the freeway, the San Diego freeway. Do you believe it's in the city of Santa Monica? Yes. Nothing further. All right, the uh, blue jury is back in the courtroom and now cross-examination uh, before that jury only. Thank you, Your Honor. Menendez, 
You have testified that your father spoke with you about uh, disinheriting you in September of 1988, correct? Uh, he did disinherit me. That's what he told Yes. In fact, sir, he did not disinherit you. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Now, in September of 1988, did something occur um, that precipitated your father discussing with you that he was going to disinherit you? He never told me why he was disinheriting me. Do you recall something occurring during the month of September 1988 uh, that gave you the idea that uh, it was the reason why your father wanted to disinherit you? I didn't know why he wanted to disinherit me, but something did occur in September of 1988. Now, in July of 1988, you and your brother committed burglaries, correct? Uh, Craig Signorelli, my brother and I. Now, there were two houses involved, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the home of Mr. and Mrs. John List? Yes, sir. And the home of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Ginsburg? Yes. Now, with respect to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, John List, are, are you saying that your brother was there? No. And according to uh, the stipulation that was entered into earlier in the case, um, it reads as follows. Between July 1st, 1988 and July 10th, 1988, Eric Menendez and a friend were at the home of another friend, John List Jr., whose parents were away on vacation. While searching for the keys to a van, Eric and his friend found a piece of paper bearing the combination to the List family safe. After the safe was opened, Eric removed money and property. Correct? Correct. That's what the stipulation says, yes. Now, you're saying that the friend that was with you was Craig Signorelli with respect to the List house, correct? Yes, he was. You're the one that entered the safe and took out money and, and jewelry, correct? Okay, actually, no, I thought we just had a room. Uh, yes, I did it with Craig. You're the one that went into the safe, not Craig Signorelli. You went into the safe and removed money and jewelry, correct? Actually, you're argumentative. No, sir. If, if I did it alone, then Craig wouldn't have done it with me. He was with me when we were uh, uh, looking for the keys, as it says in there, and then we found the safe. Mr. Menendez, who entered the safe? Craig and I. Were you bumping into each other as you entered it? It's not a walk-in safe, sir. Right. It, it's, it's a floor safe, correct? Yes. Who entered the safe? Nobody entered the safe. Did we you, stood outside of it, sir. Did you remove something from that safe? Yes. And on July 14th, 1988, you and your brother entered the Calabasas residence of Michael Ginsburg, correct? Yes. And you removed a combination safe and its contents from a closet? Yes. A VCR? I don't remember everything that was removed. If it's in there, it was removed. And this is part of the stipulation. China silverware. Well, I would object to reading the stipulation. I think it's confusing the And I would object Why don't you rephrase the question? Okay. Do you remember removing, with your brother from this house, in this residential burglary that you and your brother uh, committed, uh, a combination safe? Yes. Do you remember re removing a VCR? Not specifically. China? Yes. Silverware? Yes. A solo flex machine? Yes. An IBM computer? Not specifically. Jewelry? Yes. Did you take money in that one as well? Objection is it's in the stipulation, Your Honor. It's no. Now, you and your brother were not caught on that, and you were actually turned in on September 16th, some over two months after you had committed these crimes, correct? I turned found in as soon as facts not uh, I turned myself in on September 18th. September 16th? 16th. Now, when you say you turned yourself in, your father was with you, correct? Uh, my father and an attorney. And your father accompanied you uh, to the Malibu Sheriff Station, correct? Y yes, we, uh, we, we came in with a U-Haul truck. And he assisted in, in um, 
taken the property that you had stolen and turned it over to the sheriffs, correct? Yes, sir. Your father also had to make restitution to the victims, Mr. and Mrs. List and the Ginsburg, for property that was not returned, correct? I was not aware of that, but uh, I learned that later. Uh, it's in the stipulation. What is it that was not returned that you remember? Objection, Your Honor. I, I don't remember what was not returned. I thought everything was returned. We bought it in a big U-Haul truck, and uh, my father did not discuss with me. I know he had to pay uh, some cash. I didn't know why he didn't discuss with me those things. Could it have been that you spent some of the cash that you took out of the list safe? No, I, uh, I don't believe I did. You didn't spend any of that cash? Is that your testimony? My parents found it in my, uh, they found, I don't remember how much money, in a safe in my house. Where was that safe? In my closet. How long after you had committed these crimes did they find this money in your safe? I'm going to object to use the word crimes. These were handled as juvenile court matters. Um, soon after. How soon after? I don't remember. At some point, you understood that your parents uh, found some, some money in your safe, and did they ask you where you got the money? Yes. And what did you tell them? I told them. Told them what? I told them that... Uh, my brother, Craig, and I had uh, uh, gotten this from two houses. Now, Craig was with you with regard to the List house, correct? Yes. You're the one that went into the safe, correct? Removed items from the safe. It was, it was Craig and I were, were right there. Um, I did as well, yes. And. You and your brother entered into the Ginsburg residence, correct? Yes. Now, did you describe for your father exactly what you did in those two, the uh, grand theft from the list and the um, residential burglary of the Ginsburgs? No, I didn't describe it for him at all. I told him exactly where everything was, though. Did you describe for him or relate to him anything that you had done with respect to those two uh, break-ins? I, I told him what we took and drove him uh, to where we had it. Now, when did this occur as far as you telling your parents what you had done? As far as me telling them, excuse me, I didn't hear. What you had done? I believe in August. And it was on September 16th, 1988, that your uh, father accompanied you to the Malibu Sheriff Station? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. And I believe you told Dr. Ozeal that you resented your father criticizing you and your brother for the way that you had done the burglaries? Objection on this stage, Dr. Ozeal. No. <coughs> Did you, in fact, tell Dr. Ozeal that your father had criticized you and your brother for the way you did those burglaries? Uh, no, I didn't. What I told Dr. Ozeal was that uh, Dad told us that we were too stupid. Uh, we did them stupidly and that we got caught uh, and that if we were going to do something, we should do it right. Did that uh, go into your state of mind as to um, how you would commit the murder of your parents? No. That had nothing to do with it? I don't, I don't, no, not at all. Do you remember talking to Dr. Ozeal on October 31st and November 2nd and relating things uh, that uh, went into the mix of why you wanted to kill your parents? Yes, but that's not when that was related. Are you saying that you didn't talk about the residential burglaries in the October 31st or the November 2nd sessions? Oh, we did, uh, just not that statement. In fact, you have indicated that your father discussed with you 
uh, disinheriting you in September of 1988, <coughs> did this have anything, did the burglaries that you committed have anything to do with uh, your father discussing with you the disinheritance? Yes, My father did not discuss things with me. Um, he told me I was disinherited. Uh, the burglaries play into it. He told me that I, I did them stupidly. Uh, I thought that it, it might have something to do with it, but he wouldn't have just disinherited me over uh, a burglary issue. Now he was pretty angry with me uh, throughout that summer, mostly because I was ranked 70 in tennis, and uh, he thought I was a pretty big failure. So it wasn't the fact that you did residential burglaries that made him upset and want to disinherit you. It was because you were ranked 70th in tennis? The 70th was more important to him. In, from what I thought, I'm sure he was he was upset about the burglaries. There's no question about it. Uh, but I don't think that that was the main. Uh, that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But I don't I don't know exactly what played into it. He was upset that you had committed these crimes, correct? Uh, he was upset that. Yeah, I would say he was also upset that we did it. He he was upset that we did it poorly. Now, did your mother and father, after you did the burglaries, did they see to it that you got um, some psychological assistance? I think that begs the question. Calls for speculation. Uh, we went to see Dr. Ozeal because my attorney told me that in order to get the best possible verdict from the juvenile court that I went to, uh, going to an attorney uh, would play a large role in uh, the attorney's evaluation of, of me or, or, or something along those lines. Going to who? Uh, you said going to an attorney. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Going to see Dr. Ozeal or, or a therapist uh, would be important to the court. Do you recall, sir, that um, you had an interview with Detective Zoller on September 17th, 1989 in Cranberry, New Jersey? Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Page 32, counsel. Do you remember telling uh, Detective Zoller that my parents basically made us get one after the Calabasas thing, referring to Dr. Ozeal? Yes, that's exactly what happened. And you stated on that same uh, date, same page, counsel 32, that Dr. Ozeal is a very good friend of yours, that he spent a lot of time with you with us, basically, after the killings, correct? Yes. So Dr. Ozeal, as of September 17th, was a very good friend of yours, wasn't he? Uh, I, I viewed him as a, uh, as a friend of mine. There's no question about that. And now that the courts have authorized him to testify in this case, he's not such a good friend of yours anymore, is he? Objection, Your Honor. That's argument. Sustained. Now, do you recall testifying in front of the jury, sir, that uh, your brother was a very good friend of yours, that uh, he protected you throughout your life? Remember all of that? Yes. And that you love your brother? I love him very much. Do you remember saying, sir, on November 29th, 1989, that you... Your Honor, for this, I would like a page that I am under. Page... B, 16 and 17. Okay, your version or ours? Sure. I'd like to take the next one. All right, B, 16. And 17, Your Honor. It's a 33. Where are you starting? Um, basically, I could paraphrase it or I could read it directly. Where are you starting from? Um, where it says... No, you know, I would rather oh. be well, just tell me where it is so I can look at it. Okay, it's basically, it starts at, uh, what about the police? Mm -hmm.
Your Honor, with respect to B-17, it's in the middle of the page where it starts off, man. Council one who discusses. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, do you recall having a conversation with uh, Craig Signorelli on November 29th, 1989? Yes. At Gladstone's restaurant? No, but I'm sure that's right. Do you remember uh, in the conversation with respect to your brother, you said, man, I wouldn't be surprised if someone... I'm going to object to reading it. Okay. Your Honor, I think that's right. Overall. Overall. Do you recall, Mr. Menendez, stating on that day, man, I wouldn't surprise if someone came out, if someone, if he actually did do it, and someone came out and said he did it, do you remember making that statement? About your brother? No, I don't. If and you could you, show it to me, I would. Then you stated the bravest human being in this entire world. Objection, Your Honor, to reading that. Over. Do you remember that? Not really, sir. Why don't you show it to him? Then, yes, Your Honor. Uh, to get in context. May I approach? Yes. Pages uh, B16 and 17 of 33. Why are you showing the 16? To give them the context. Where I am. Mr. Menendez, do you recall having a conversation with uh, Mr. Signorelli in which you're discussing you and your brother the suspects in the case? Uh, that's not exactly how it went about, but uh, yes. And that you stated that if somebody knew that your brother was involved in the killing, he would have to be the most, the bravest human being in this entire world to come forward with that information? No, that's not at all what I said. What did you mean by that? That, man, I wouldn't surprise if someone came out, if someone, if he actually did do it, meaning your brother, because you're referring to your brother, and someone came out and said he did it, you said the bravest human being in this entire world. You're completely mis misreading it out of context. If you'd like me, I'd read it. What did you mean by that? I, I don't remember what I meant by it, um, but that's not how, that's not what I said. Is this, a, are you saying this transcript is inaccurate? Um, what I'm saying is the transcript is missing large portions because apparently the tape wasn't very good. I didn't know I was being tape recorded. Uh, and so there's portions in that tape which I don't know what I'm saying. In other words, I only got glimpses of, of my sentences. But in terms of the bravest human being in the entire world, I'm not quite sure what I meant by that. But I don't think I was referring to someone coming out and saying that my brother did it. Now, the sentence just previous to that was, if someone came out, if someone, if he actually did do it, and someone came out and said he did it, you said, the bravest human being yeah, in this entire world. Yeah. Why don't you in, inject the uh, comment by Mr. Signorelli so we have it in context here. Okay. You stated 
man, I wouldn't surprise if someone came out, if someone, if he actually did do it and someone came out and said he did it and Craig Signorelli said, yeah, then they'd be going, yeah. And then you stated the bravest human being in this entire world and Craig Signorelli said, I remember Princeton. And you said the bravest human being in this entire world. What did you mean by that? I don't know if I can see it again. I can tell you hopefully what I meant by it, but I'm not quite sure. I wasn't referring to my brother, I don't think, in terms of someone coming out and saying he did it, and therefore that person would be the bravest human being in the entire world. But I think what your, your interpretation is of it. OK, let me, let me read a couple of uh, sentences above that then. I'm not scared of my brother at all if I died, but, uh, and Craig says, yeah, and you say, you know, you have nothing to fear about him. He won't touch you. And uh, Craig says, I'm, I'm just worried about him. I don't know. He was referring to your brother, wasn't he? Yeah, the whole conversation was about Craig Signorelli trying to get me to admit that I killed my parents because he was wearing a wiretap and the police were in a van outside. And, 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 I, was, and I was telling him, that I didn't do it because I had confessed to him before and I had heard up in Santa Barbara that he was going around saying I did it. So in this conversation I was trying to convince him in any way possible that I didn't do it. And, uh, and at that point he switched, well maybe your brother did it. And that's I think the point where you're at. <coughs> so in fact you had told Craig Signorelli, uh, your best friend, that you had done it. Well, yes. And you had heard before that he had been telling people up in Santa Barbara? Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, Jade, told me that that's where the rumors were up in Santa Barbara, and of course I knew they were true. And when you made the, the comment to, to um, Craig Signorelli on that day, you, you asked about the police. You said, what about the police? And Craig Signorelli said, I don't know about the police. And you said, talk to them? And he said, I have talked to them. And you said, what did you tell them? And he said, I still think they think I'm a suspect. And you stated, Surely you would have never told him anything that I told you like that, because I mean that's, and then he, uh, Craig Signorelli stated, yeah, that's what I'll tell him. And then you stated, I, I, I was, and Craig says, hi, Eric, uh, Eric killed his parents, yeah. And then you stated, because I, I could use this, they don't know who suspect me, they suspect my brother. Do you remember that? No, if you show it to me, I can confirm it. Can I approach again, Your Honor? Yes. Yes, this is Craig Signorelli telling me that the police still think he's a suspect. Uh, and then me asking him, you didn't, basically saying that you wouldn't have told people up in Santa Barbara what I told you. And him saying, of course not, I wouldn't have done that. And, uh, and me saying that, I don't know, there's too many deletions, I don't know what I'm referring to here. And then I said they suspect my brother, because I knew that the detectives all did. You stated that they don't know who, they don't know who committed the crime, correct? Uh, there's a deletion, I, that could be what it was. They don't suspect you, but they suspect your brother, isn't Ye that what you said? Yes. And then later on, you talked about, um, a person having to be the bravest human being in this entire world if they came forward, if your brother actually did do it, and someone came out and said he did it. No, that's not what it says. I don't, I Please back to page no 17 longer. of 33, sir, where it's highlighted in orange. Yes. What do you mean, sir, by, I wouldn't be surprised if someone came out, if someone, if he actually did do it, and someone came out and said he did it, the bravest human being in this entire world. What Be did you mean by that? Before I, before I say the bravest human being in the entire world, Craig Signorelli says, yeah, uh, then they'd be going, yeah. And then I say the bravest human being in the entire world. And then Craig says, I remember Princeton. And apparently I'm still in my thought. And I say the bravest human being in this entire world. And Craig says, yeah, that was deletion, I say, hmm, and then Craig says, do you think it's the mob? I, I, I don't believe I'm referring to someone coming out and saying my brother did it, and therefore that person would be the bravest human being in the entire world. But maybe I was. I mean, I don't remember the context of why that was said, because there's too much missing. Now, there doesn't appear to be anything missing in that, uh, this 
set of questions and answers, correct? There's no Before asterisks. Before and after. From here to here, where it says, if he actually did do it, and someone came out and said he did it, the bravest human being in this entire world. There's nothing in between. There's nothing that's left out. Oh, before that, I say I wouldn't be surprised if if someone came out, and basically I'm saying if someone came out and said he did it. So I don't know why I'm I'm explaining to you. I would also say that person would be the bravest human being in the entire world if I wouldn't be surprised if someone did come out and do it. You stated if someone came out, if someone. Sustained. We've been through okay. this. Now, could that have been, this is November 29th, 1989, could that have been in reference to the threats made by your brother and you to Dr. Ozeal? In the object to the form of the question, is there no testimony that Mr. Menendez ever threatened Dr. Ozeal? I never threatened Dr. Ozeal. I did the opposite. I, uh, I'm the one that went to him in the first place. Because he was a good, very good friend of yours, correct? Apparently I said that on the 17th. Um, I did think he was a nice guy, yes. Now, when you made the statement about the person coming forward being the bravest human being in this entire world, were you referring to Dr. Ozeal? Dr. Ozeal coming forward? Yes. No, I, I, uh, I wasn't referring to Dr. Ozeal coming forward. Were you telling Craig Signorelli, who you have said that you told uh, what you and your brother had done, were you, were you telling Craig Signorelli, you better not say anything because uh, Lyle will get you? No, uh, but I was telling Signorelli throughout that, uh, that conversation that, uh, you know, uh, basically that I wish that he would not tell anyone. And he's trying to convince me that the police still think he's a suspect, so he couldn't have told anyone. Uh, I didn't know he was wiretapped. <coughs> You didn't but, know it at the time? No, I didn't. So what you said on that date was not anything that you had made up. You were actually saying what you meant on that day, or what you were feeling. Yes. And you had said that uh, even though you had confessed to Craig Signorelli, you had heard that he had related that fact to other people in Santa Barbara, so you wanted to mislead him in this, uh, this conversation? Completely. I wanted to try to do it in the best way possible, that I didn't do it, and that Lyle didn't do it, and that uh, try to convince him of that, because I had heard that he was going around telling people, and I suspected he went to the police. So you wanted to confuse uh, Craig Signorelli? No, I wanted to... Uh, try to convince him that I didn't do it. So you were lying on uh, November 29th? Yes. About your involvement in the killings of your parents? Uh, yeah, we were lying back and forth to each other. Um, and it kept going on. Now, You stated that uh, you didn't want to be an actor, is that right? Uh, well, I enjoyed acting, um, and I had thought about it, and uh, <coughs> I really didn't know what I wanted to do after my parents died. And in November, on November 29th, uh, you spoke to uh, Craig Signorelli, and you told him that uh, you wanted to make uh, money in acting. Correct? Could you, I may very well have, um, if I could just see where I said it. Okay. Was that your state of mind that you wanted to become an actor? Uh, no, I was, if I remember correctly, and I haven't seen it, um, I was telling Craig that I wanted to be an actor, I wanted to be a tennis player, I uh, wanted to go into real estate, I wanted to uh, set up a homeless uh, charity. I wanted to do all sorts of things, and then I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. With respect to the real estate, uh, there's been testimony in front of uh, this jury that the purchase uh, agreement uh, for this penthouse suite in Marina del Rey and the Marina City, City Towers um, for $990,000, remember you had uh, indicated that 
you had made a deposit of $29,700? Yes. And that that was simply a loan? Yes, it was. Now, you yourself wanted to buy uh, property, correct? Yes. And on September 17th, you had told Detective Zoller that you intended to uh, buy some property in the Marina del Rey area. I, I think I told him that I wanted to move to Marina del Rey. And buy a house, correct? Yes. And that um, this property, this $990,000 uh, penthouse, was uh, Lyle's idea and it was supposed to be his house? Well, if I remember the apartment correctly, it really had only one feasible room. I couldn't live there with Lyle. And uh, I had no intention of, of living in the same apartment with Lyle anyway. So instead of getting that $990,000 uh, penthouse, you put an offer on a $1.5 million house in Marina del Rey, correct? Objection no. Mr. Menendez, do you recall your testimony that uh, the day that you came back after the memorial service in um, New Jersey was the day that the computer people were there and that Casey Whalen picked you up from the airport? I know that Casey Whalen picked me up from the airport. Um, it's my best recollection that it was on uh, September 1st, um, mostly because Casey, his mother, and his sister remember it was that day. Okay, do you remember, Casey Whalen testified and he said that he picked you up from the airport on September 1st, 1989, correct? Yes. And that he took you back to the Beverly Hills house? Yes. And that he left your um, luggage in his car? I don't remember if he testified to that. Yeah, your suitcases were in the car and you went inside the house for a period of time? Yes. <clears throat> and that when you were upstairs checking on your answer machine, um, you were called downstairs and that's when you saw this computer man? Yes, that's what he testified to. And uh, he said that he didn't remember a woman with him, with the computer man. Ask another question, please. Do you remember um, discussing this with uh, Casey Whalen, uh, the fact that there was this computer person uh, at the house on the day that you came back from the East Coast? I never discussed it with Casey. And he, he had stated in his testimony, Casey Whalen, that uh, Craig Signorelli was not there on that day. Objection, Your Honor, to accumulating and restating other witnesses' testimony. Sustain. Is it your memory, sir, that when Casey Whalen came in and testified, he was accurate as to where, what he did on the day that he brought you home from the airport? Yeah, I'm going to object to that as comment from the committee for future by the witness. And I would ask you to uh, Objection overruled as to that question. Um, what Casey remembers uh, and his sister and his mother remember is what they remember. Um, my memory is uh, more vague than theirs. Okay, do you, you said that you remember I believe when your attorney asked you, you said that you remember specifically that the day you came back is the day that the computer man was at your house. That's my best um, memory. Um, that is my best memory, but I'm, I wasn't as sure about it until I heard that Casey, his mother and his sister, uh, confirmed that that is the day. Well, could it have been the next day that the computer man came? Uh, it is possible. Okay, and so when uh, Casey Whalen said that he didn't know where you were the next day, that he just took you and brought you home and uh, took you to your car that day, could that be possible? I don't know if he testified to that. I know he testified um, that the next day, if I came in on a Friday, then the next day he did drive me back to my house. If I came in on a Thursday, then it was the fr Friday that he took me back to my house. But um, those days went by so quick for me. I don't remember as much as I would, would like to. Now, when you came back from the East Coast, normally before your parents uh, were killed by you and your brother, would you put uh, your plane tickets on, on their American Express card? Before my parents died, would I do it? Right. Would you, would you have a record on, your, on their American, American Express card regarding 
plane flights that you took? I don't know. They did everything. Um, I don't know how they bought tickets or didn't, or by whom. Or Once your parents were killed, uh, did you get yourself a, a credit card or anything of that sort? Yeah, my Aunt Martha gave me a credit card. Okay. Now, do you recall purchasing a ticket to come back from New Jersey uh, with a credit card? I don't recall. Um, I know that most of my tickets uh, that I bought went through my Aunt Terry, who was a travel agent. Um, but very well could have. I just don't have a good memory of it. Okay, do you remember where you were? Uh, well, which, which airport did you fly out of to come back to Los Angeles from the uh, East Coast? My best recollection is that I flew out of Newark. From where? Newark. Newark Airport? Yeah. Do you remember uh, going to that airport and, and making the purchase? No. The ticket? I don't have a, a good recollection of, of pretty much any of those events. Do you know which airline you went on? No. You have no idea? I flew so much during that time. I just, I probably touched on every airline at one point. Now, do you have any idea how uh, it could be ascertained where you, um, what day you flew on? Aaron, I'm going to object to the form of the question. So stay. Do you have any recollection of um, that flight back from uh, New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey? I have a, a good recollection of, of meeting Casey at the baggage claim, but I've tried really hard to remember uh, the exact day I flew back, where it was from, and, and the, the actual flight, because I know it's important. but. I, uh, I haven't been out to do it. Do you remember how you got to the airport in New Jersey? Uh, I, I don't. I know there's records indicating all sorts of things, but I don't know how I got there. Now, was, was Casey Whalen accurate when he said that um, he picked you up from the airport in the baggage claim? Yes, that he did. And that he brought you home? Yes, he did. And that you needed to pick up some things? Yes, I did. And you went into the house and you went into your room and you checked on your messages? Well, um, is the question, is Casey accurate or is that, is the question what the witness did? Because we'd objected. Sustained. Why don't you rephrase the okay. question? Is that what happened so far, that uh, you went up to your, to get your messages and Casey was in your room with you? That could be accurate. And that then you went uh, to Casey's, oh, actually a computer person came, correct? I, I know a computer person came uh, at one point, yeah. and uh, I remember them uh, vaguely. And it was the day that Casey had picked you up from the airport? That I cannot be sure of. Now, you heard um, testimony from Casey Whalen that it couldn't have been Craig Signorelli there because he had taken you from the airport. Correct? No, I believe what he was saying is that it couldn't have been Craig Signorelli there because he was there. Right, and that was the day that he picked you up from the airport, he testified. Uh, yeah, I think that's what he testified. <laughs> and your recollection on examination by your counsel was that you recall specifically that the computer person came on the day that you came back from the East Coast. So that, that supports what Casey Whalen said, is that correct? Is that what I said on? To the it's compound. Okay. Do you, Mr. Menendez, do you remember testifying that your, uh, when your attorney asked you um, if you have a specific recollection of when the computer man came, you said yes. Remember that? Yeah, I know he came on a Friday. And you remember that that was the day that you came back from the East Coast? I, I, I just, I believe that was the day. Um, but that's been severely reinforced by his mother, his sister, and him saying that, that they thought that was the day. I just, I cannot be sure. And in fact, when they testified to that, they said that uh, later uh, that evening, you all went to a Mexican restaurant, correct? Uh, I believe they testified to that. And that was the first day uh, that you had arrived back from, from New Jersey. You're, I'm, I'm not clear again if the question is what the witnesses said. Or All right, let's phrase it as a question. And is it, so we can 
intelligible question, please. Is that your recollection, sir, that um, the day that you came back from New Jersey is the day that this computer man came? Uh, that would be, I couldn't say for certain. Would it be your recollection that it was some other day that the computer man came? That, I mean the day that I got back? Right. That it, it, that could be. I, I don't, I remember it more the other way than that way, but I just can't be, uh, I can't tell you 100% on this. When, you, when um, Casey Whelan may be wrong then about when he was there, is that right? Calling for speculation. Now you, you heard Craig Signorelli say that he was there when the computer man came, correct? Yes, that's what he said. And that he remembered the pregnant wife? Uh, that's what he said, yes. And that he recalled um, what occurred during the time when, when Mr. and Mrs. Heyman were there? Your Honor, I'm going to check this again. This is accumulating the stadium. Do you recall, sir? that uh, the Haymans came in and they identified uh, Craig Signorelli as a person that was with you? Same objection, Your Honor. Other witnesses have testified. Is it your testimony that um, it was Casey Whalen that was with you that day rather than Craig Signorelli? Uh, yes, I believe that's what everyone believes. Excuse me, I believe that's what? Everyone believes. <coughs> that's what I believe, too. And when you say everyone, that doesn't include Mr. and Mrs. Heyman, and it doesn't include Craig Signorelli either. No, I believe that uh, Mr. or Mrs. Heyman described a man that was stockier than I was, with sandy hair and light eyes, and Craig Signorelli has black hair, black eyes, and is thinner than I am, whereas Casey has sandyish hair, blue eyes, and is a football player. And that's why I believe they're mistaken about so it. When, when they came in to testify, they were wrong. Wrong about? About Craig Signorelli being there that day. Yes, Casey was there. And Casey says he was there because he knows he brought you home from the airport that day. I'm going to object to this again, Your Honor. Sustained. Sustained. Objection sustained. You recall on the day after you got back from the uh, airport, or from the East Coast, that you uh, were brought back to your house in Beverly Hills, correct, to, to pick up your car? Yes. And you testified earlier that you would spend time at the Beverly Hills house during the day because you were just drawn back to the house. I, my recollection is coming back to me that I think my grandmother was, uh, was there during those later times, and that's why I went back to the house. But I, I did go back to the Beverly Hills house, I know that, after the airport. Did your grandmother beat you back from the... Uh, Memorial service in, on the East Coast? No, she didn't. Okay, so when you came back, uh, was anyone there at the Beverly Hills house? Uh, the security guards. Okay, and you had gotten a note that your brother had been there earlier? Uh, either that day or the other day, the day before. It may have been the very day that you came back. Uh, it may have been. And do you remember Casey Whalen? Um, actually being there throughout the time that this computer man was there? Yeah, my best memory is that Casey was there. I don't have a... I only remember bits and pieces of what happened when the computer person was there. Okay, so the, the first day uh, you were with Casey. Now, the second day that you were back in Los Angeles, do you recall anything about that day? No. Besides I, going to pick up your car in, in Beverly Hills? I, I really don't even recall much about the day that I flew in, other than the fact that I flew in. Um, and that Casey Whalen picked you up? Yeah, I know he picked me up at the airport because I have a, a definite memory of that, but I don't remember much about most of those days. You do remember going out to um, dinner on the first day that you were there with Mr. Uh, Casey Whalen, his sister, and his mother? I don't have a great memory of that, no. You have a moment, Sean? Uh, 
Mr. Menendez, do you recall just prior to flying back to the East Coast uh, where you were? No, I don't. Now, I have some uh, U.S. Air um, records. They have uh, the records. Are right, you we can mark the exhibit as two ninety two? Yes, you may have both. Mm -hmm. Mendes, I'm going to show you what's been marked as exhibit two ninety two. And ask you if that refreshes your recollection as to when you came back to Los Angeles from the East Coast. You could help me out. Well, Your Honor, I'm going to object to being held if it doesn't refresh his recollection by looking at it. Overall, he's just pointing to a particular portion of the document. <coughs> does, uh, does this mean that I flew back on that day? Mr. Menendez, doesn't that indicate that you flew back to Los Angeles on August 31st, 1989? I won't object to the question. Overall, overall. At, uh, at 1215, it says I flew at 1215? Yes, New York time. That would, that would, uh, that doesn't go along with my memory. Only because if you fly at 1215, you get back to California close to 315, 4 o'clock. And I'm quite sure I was back by two. Now, isn't it a uh, three-hour difference between here and New York? Yeah, I think it's a six-hour flight and a uh, three-hour difference. So, Casey Whalen picked you up on August 31st, correct? That was not the day that the, the Haymans came to your house. Well, I'd like to say this with a ticket, and it may be the ticket, but my memory is that I was back in Los Angeles uh, somewhere between 12 and 2 o'clock like Casey remembers. And if I flew on this ticket, assuming the plane left on time, I could not have gotten to the baggage before four. And uh, that doesn't go with my memory, but this may be the ticket. I'm going to object on the question with whether it refreshed the Overall, the answer will stand. Now, Mr. Mendez, you flew out of LaGuardia Airport, correct? My recollection is that I flew out of Newark. And isn't it true that you were with Mark Heffernan at the U.S. Open in New York on the night before you flew back to Los Angeles? I don't know. I knew I was with Mark Heffernan in New York at a hotel, which I stayed over, because I remember seeing a match at the U.S. Open, and I, and I met Mark there. And Mark but Heffernan's wife was with you at that hotel, correct? Yeah, he, they were, we all slept in the same room. There in were two fact, beds. you had a bodyguard with you, didn't you? Yes, I did. And the bodyguard took you to the airport the next morning on August 31st, correct? Yeah, I know there are records of that, of a, of a, of a limo with him going to uh, LaGuardia, but uh, I know Detective Zoller on the 17th thought I left on the 1st uh, with a ticket under the name of Eric Tam. And I have a, another record of uh, a limousine picking me up on September 1st. Now, Mr. Which, Menendez. So the records are, are so jumbled that I wish I could tell you for sure, but I may very well have left on the 31st is what I'm saying. I just don't remember. And isn't it true that the security guard that was with you was a New York police officer? Yes, he was. And he took you to LaGuardia. It wasn't New Jersey. It wasn't Newark as you had testified that you flew out of. Isn't that correct? <coughs> Rephrase the question. You testified, sir, that you flew out of Newark, correct? Uh, that's my best recollection that I flew out of Newark. And you recall being taken after the U.S. Open and after seeing your coach, Mark Heffernan, in New York, you indicated right now that the bodyguard took you to LaGuardia Airport, correct? After the U.S. Open, I couldn't have gone to the U.S. Open that morning if the plane left at 12.15. But I know there's the record of that, and that's why I believe that I may have left on the 31st, and I can't be sure. Um, but I simply don't remember. Uh, I believe he says he took me to a Delta flight, too. 
and this is U.S. Air. Now, who said they took you to a Delta flight? I thought that's what the records indicated, that the car went to the Delta terminal. Um, I just, if I knew for sure, I'd tell you. I, I don't. And uh, it may have been the 31st. It may have been the 1st. I don't. If you had arrived in Los Angeles on August 31st, and, and um, Casey Whalen saw a computer person there not remembering a pregnant wife, did you have a computer person there on the 31st of August? No, definitely not. But you spoke, according to Mrs. Whalen, Mrs. Cohen, you spoke about the erasure of a computer the day you came in to Los Angeles, correct? Yes, I believe that's what they said. We did speak about it. Now, um, after I got the note from Lyle, and after the Heymans were there, and the Heymans said the computer was wiped, I knew what Lyle had done. But the testimony was that you were talking about the erasure of the computer on the day you came back from the East Coast, the day that Casey Whalen picked you up, correct? The testimony was that we were talking about the computer on a Friday night because Katie said that she knew she was working that night, and that's how she could pinpoint it to Friday, which was September 1st. The testimony was that Casey Whalen said that you had your suitcases in his car, you simply went upstairs, you got your um, messages off of your answer machine, and when you came downstairs, the computer man was there, and he didn't remember any pregnant wife with him. Isn't that correct, sir? Sustained. Sustained. It's okay. argumentative. Now, when, when you said, and Casey Whalen said, that Craig Signorelli could not have been there that day because it was Casey Whalen who picked you up from the airport, that's inaccurate, isn't it? Because it happened the next day. That's, no, no, no. Go ahead. Be a witness. And object, Your Honor, that it's argumentative. It's not handled. Sustained. Mr. Uh, Menendez, mm -hmm. was Casey Whalen lying? Objection, Your Honor. Overall, no, it's not just Casey. It's his sister and his mother, and they're not lying. And they all recalled that the day that you came back from uh, New Jersey, that was the day that this computer person came, correct? I, I believe that's what they said. Um, I know they said it was a Friday. But you didn't come back on a Friday. You came back on a Thursday, didn't you? I'm not sure of that. Is this a good place to stop here? All right, we'll be in recess then, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry to keep you this late, but we were hopeful we could finish this, but we haven't, so we'll have to resume on Tuesday. Don't discuss this matter with anyone. Don't form any final opinions about it. Don't uh, look at any of the news coverage. Uh, we'll see you all back. And don't look at anything else or hear anything or be, permit yourselves to be exposed to anything about this case outside of the courtroom in any form. And we'll see you all back here Tuesday at 9 o'clock. Have a good weekend. Bruce is in the courtroom. Uh, good morning to you all. And we're ready to resume with the um, trial and the cross-examination of the witness, Eric Menendez, in front of the blue jury only. I'll uh, remind you that you're still under oath. Yes, sir. You may continue your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, directing your attention to November 29th, 1989, do you recall having a conversation with uh, Craig Signorelli? Yes, I do. And in that conversation, do you recall talking about two screenplays that you were currently working on? Yes. And uh, you discussed uh, those screenplays? Yes. Were you excited about uh, doing those screenplays, writing those screenplays? Um, overall. In a sense, yes. And in that uh, same conversation, do you recall talking about buying real estate? I think we had a, a com part of the conversation was about real estate, about um, something to do, yes. Do you recall uh, indicating that she wanted to buy a house in um, Beverly Hills in that uh, conversation? No. Do you recall talking about buying, in that conversation, buying a house for $8 million in Beverly Hills? Yeah, we were talking about ideas that we were having back and forth, and I said one great idea would be to buy this house and develop it and this and that. And also, in that same conversation, did you speak about uh, your uncle, Brian Anderson? Yes. And how you had discussed with him uh, uh, 
investing millions of dollars and, and getting a return of 30 to 40 million dollars? It was actually that? the other way around, but I told them about how, how Brian, um, my uncle, had come to me and talked about um, the best way to handle the money would be to invest it in uh, real estate and to go around buying it. And, uh, yeah. And in that regard, do you recall uh, accompanying your brother uh, to the Marina City Club? Yes. And you testified that uh, you had loaned your brother this $29,700 for the $990,000 penthouse? Yes, I did. Now, on your own, did you make an offer on a $1.495 million single-family residence in the Silver Strand of Marina Del Rey in February of 1990? Object to the form of the question on what the house is worth is never been determined. All right, rephrase the question, please. Yes. Mr. Menendez, do you recall in February of 1990 being shown a residence in the Silver Strand area of Marina Del Rey? Uh, I don't specifically remember it, but uh, I may have. Yeah. Do you recall a real estate agent by the name of Larry Cohen? Yes. Did he show you some properties in Marina Del Rey? Uh, he showed me several different properties. Uh, houses that you were interested in? Uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, move into a house um, since we were going to be selling, well, the estate was going to be selling all the other houses. Uh, so um, I looked at a few houses in Marina Del Rey. In that regard, do you recall making an offer of $1.1 million on a particular piece of property in the Silver Strand area of Marina Del Rey? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Mr. Hernandez, also in that <clears throat> November 29th, 1989, uh, conversation that you had was with uh, Craig Signorelli, do you recall uh, telling him that you carried a firearm? Yes. Why was that, that you carried a firearm? I didn't carry a firearm. Did you make the statement, there's not much I can do, man, but I carry a gun around with me? Yes. Was that in response to uh, the people that had killed your parents? You were afraid of them? Uh, no, actually, it was in response to uh, Craig Signorelli trying to, to get out of me um, on tape that I killed my parents and me trying to convince him, since I figured that he was going to the police, that I didn't do it. And I went as far as telling him that I carried around a firearm for protection. Were you lying? Yes. Now, you didn't know you were being taped that day, did you? No. Mr. Menendez, recalling the 24th of August, the day that uh, you and your brother had bought the Rolex watches, you recall that day? Yes. And you used a credit card that day, correct? I don't know. You don't recall? I didn't do the buying. <clears throat> I, I really wasn't concerned how he bought it. With, the, <clears throat> with respect to the Rolex watch uh, purchase and the money clips, did you see your brother take out $15,000 in cash? Currency? I, if you say he bought it with a credit card, he bought it with a credit card. I just don't remember. You had indicated that you had gone earlier in the day and had made some purchases of, uh, I believe, ties and coats, would that be fair to say, at mm -hmm. Bullock's? No. Um, I don't remember any ties, but I know I went there because I didn't have a sports jacket um, and I needed to wear one to the funeral. Mr. Menendez, do you recall making uh, purchases, two purchases on credit cards at Bullock's? Well, one I'm going to object to this and ask to approach improper rebuttals. Overall. If I did, I did. I, I don't remember. I believe you had testified in direct examination that you had uh, purchased some slacks that you had to get uh, altered that day. Objection to state's testimony. Uh, Rephrase the question. Okay. Mr. Menendez, didn't you testify that you had bought a garment and that particular day you had to have it altered? Yeah, I, I, I bought a uh, sports jacket. I don't remember buying any slacks. Um, but I believe I had to have something altered. The sports jacket, I think it was, I'm not sure. And that was at Bullock's? I believe I had it altered at Bullock's. I mean, I, I, I just don't remember now. Do you recall, sir, that uh, there were two purchases at Bullock's, one for the ties and coats at $1,663.51 that was put on a, a credit card? Remember that? Uh, okay. Do you, do you recall that? Your Honor, I'm going to object to this. There's been no discovery of this. 
Did you wish to approach? As to the last uh, two questions, um, and one of which was answered, the other question was not answered. Um, the last question was not answered, the previous question was, and the answer. Those two questions and the one answer, uh, the court sustains the objection. Uh, those questions and the one answer are stricken and the jury is admonished to disregard them. All right, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Menendez, do you recall actually going to shop with your brother prior to going to the jewelry store to get the Rolex watches and the money clips? What do you mean by shop? I went there um, specifically to buy a sports jacket. Okay. Was there any other purchases that you made that day? besides the sports jacket? I don't remember any. Was that, were you with your brother all the time that day? I know I went to Bullock's with him because um, I didn't have any, uh, any uh, suits or any sports jackets, I know that. You had indicated that you had bought a coat, is that correct? Yes. Did you have to buy some slacks to go along with the coat? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think that I had slacks at my house. I know that I, I, uh, I wore slacks on different occasions, but I just don't remember. Okay. Do you recall pulling out cash at any one of those uh, transactions uh, to pay for the purchase that day? Is that your form of the question? Overall. Uh, I don't think so. It was an expensive coat. I don't think I would have um, paid in cash. Okay. Is it your belief that uh, credit cards were used, sir? Probably. Mr. Menendez, you had indicated that you believed the BBC stood for what? Um, and the question is being uh, rephrase the question. Okay. Do you recall being asked on uh, direct examination about uh, what you believe BBC stood for? Not specifically. Do you recall testifying that you believed uh, Dr. Ozeal must have been referring to the British Broadcasting Company? On I remember doing that on Cross. Okay. And this movie that uh, was discussed, you believed was on the British Broadcasting Company? I don't know what he was referring to. Um, it's, it's in his notes exactly. I was just... Uh, giving my best guess. Now, would another one of your guesses be the Billionaire Boys Club? I don't know what shows Dr. Ozeal watches or what he was referring to there. I can, now, I can only give you my, I, the only reason I can guess is by the language of when he says on the BBC, and, and so I don't know. And in fact, what he was referring to is something that you had stated to him that you had watched a movie on the BBC, correct? Yes, can I ask the answer? No, that's not what he was referring to. Now, isn't it true that you know the BBC to mean the Billionaire Boys Club? The BBC yes. are initials for Objection. Billionaire Boys Club. I asked the answer before the other two jurors. Uh, there was an area here that was reserved. Yes. Is that, what was your answer? Uh, yeah, that is, the initials BBC are uh, for several things. Uh, one of them is Billionaire Boys Club, definitely. Do you recall on November 29th, 1989, having a discussion with Craig Signorelli about forming a group of four people? Uh, it wasn't really a discussion. I was telling him an idea I had. Okay. And you were saying that you wanted to form a group of four people, that, of people that you could trust, correct? Yeah, I, I specifically remember doing that. I was doing that on purpose. And that these people would be working under you and they would be making one to two million dollars a year, correct? Uh, at that point, I was just spinning my wheels. I didn't have any idea. Do you recall uh, Craig Signorelli say to you, kind of like in BBC? <coughs> do you recall that question? Yeah, I, I recall that. And do you recall your answer, kind of like in BBC, but that, that that you know it's just everywhere. Do you remember making that statement? Yeah. Do you recall that you stated that you wanted to get something that would set you apart uh, from the other, uh, other people in this uh, company? No. Do you recall talking about a Rolex watch, the one that you would have to buy in a, um, 
I believe you put it, you'd have to order it. it would, it's blue that fades into black. Do you remember making that statement re relative to this group that you were going to form? Everyone would have to get this Rolex watch? No, if you can show me. Yes. Uh, May I approach, Ron? Okay. It's page A3 of 10. <laughs> of 10. <laughs> Menendez, I'm going to show you the transcript. It's page A3 of 10 regarding the conversation yeah, that you had with Craig Signorelli on November 29th, 1989. Yeah. Did you take a look at this section? Yeah, now I remember. And you, when you were discussing this uh, group of four people that would make one to two million dollars and you discussed having a Rolex watch, what were you talking about? Well, I was specifically talking about uh, forming a group of people that you could trust because I was trying to send Craig a message that I didn't trust him and that uh, I believed that he was telling people what I told him. And so I was saying, yeah, I wish, it wasn't something that I was actually planning on doing. I was saying, yeah, I wish I could form this company. I want to do this. These are some people who I can trust. And, uh, and he said everyone should have a handshake. Everyone should wear something that is status, just sets them apart. And uh, I was trying to, to, to uh, say, I don't trust you. I think you're telling the police. And uh, this is one of the things I was doing. Mr. Menendez, were you going to start the British Broadcasting Company? No, that wasn't an idea I had. So what did you mean by the, the BBC? Objection, that, say the BBC. Over that's what Craig said. And you agreed with him it was like the BBC. What did you mean by that? The Billionaire Boys Club. Okay. Now, you also made the statement, sir, that you know, and if you leave the group, fuck, I would not betray that group. What did you mean by that? I was telling Craig that I didn't trust him and I thought he was betraying me. And what would happen to those people that betrayed you? I, I don't know. I was just making the statement uh, to sort of tell him, you know, you're betraying me, but I, I'm not really a, a, a confrontational person like that and I didn't know how to say it to him, so I was... I was trying to give him the best message I could. You were trying to threaten him? Objection, Your Honor. No, I, I, I could never hurt Craig. I, I was just saying, basically, that I, was, that I was hurt. I thought he was a friend of mine, and now I hear up in Santa Barbara that he's telling everyone what I told him. And uh, so I'm trying to do my best now to convince him that I wasn't involved in the killing. So you were mad at him because he was telling the truth that you indeed were involved in the killing of your parents, correct? No, I wasn't mad at him for telling the truth. I was mad at him for for telling people something that I told them uh, at a time when I wanted his help. And uh, that's all. Now, Mr. Menendez, uh, Dr. Ozeal had testified that uh, you told him that you believe that you couldn't be connected to the crime because the guns were purchased in, in San Diego, you couldn't be connected to the guns, the prints in the house were your prints, et cetera. Do you remember that testimony? Uh, do I remember he testified to that or is that what yes. happened? Do you remember that testimony? Uh, yes. And do you remember testifying in front of this jury that uh, you believed from the first day that you would get caught? Do you remember that testimony? Uh, what I said is that I believed from the moment after that I would get caught. There was too many things the police could, could find. Do you recall, uh, again, November 29th, 1989, in your conversation with Craig Signorelli, uh, for counsel, it's uh, B-19 of 33, that you stated, I've known from the beginning, no clues, no one heard anything. And then again, at B-22 of 33, in the same conversation, with Craig uh, Signorelli. I'm going to object, Your Honor, mis misquoting the statement of the witness on the transcript. Uh -huh. Page 19. B-19 of 33, Your Honor, it's the uh, first page. Very well, Your Honor.
seems pretty. Do you remember making this statement, sir? I've known from the beginning, no clues, no one heard anything. People heard things that, and then unintelligible. Do you remember making that statement? No. Objection Could I? read out of context about the response in the next statement. Well, his answer is no, he doesn't remember that. And I believe he wanted to look at that. Yeah. yeah. May I approach around? Thank you. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, I uh I remember. Okay, when you say you've known from the beginning there were no clues, no one heard anything. What did you mean by that? What I was saying is, after I tell him that, uh, that I don't know who did it, and he's telling me, well, why don't you check it out? People, sh you should know, or don't you want to find out who did it? And I say to him, he said, Craig said, you're not going to check it out anymore? And I said, how am I going to check it out? And he says, I don't know. And I say, that's a good question. How can I check it out? I know they're not going to find anyone. I've known from the beginning, no clues. No one heard anything. People things. People heard things that, and then it goes on about firecrackers in the middle of August. Okay. I wasn't referring to me though. Uh, Mr. Menendez, when you said I know they're not going to find anyone, isn't that what you told Dr. Ozil too? No, you're you're misunderstanding the two conversations. One in which I'm telling Craig the reason I'm not going to go investigate myself is because they're not going to find anyone. And with Dr. Ozeal, I told him that the police don't know anything um, and that the only way they could find me was through the guns in San Diego. Mr. Menendez, do you recall telling Craig Signorelli on November 29, 1989 uh, regarding the, the people that uh, committed this crime, uh, the shooters of your parents, you stated, man, we're talking about special hitmen, special shotguns, and knew exactly what they were doing in and out of the house. No one saw anything, no one heard anything. And Craig Signorelli responding, doesn't make sense, and you responding, we're talking serious hitmen. Yeah. Now, you believed that you and your brother had done this in a way that you would not get caught, correct? No. And that's just what you're opposite. talking about. No, you're just pulling it out of context again. Um, Craig and I are, are again having a conversation, it's the same conversation, about the fact that nobody knows and he keeps pressing me, well don't you want to find out who did it? Aren't you going to find out who did it? And he's apparently trying to get me to say something because he's on tape. And I'm telling him, these were hit men, I don't know who did it. No one heard anything. I'm not going to be able to find out who did it. These are serious people. They knew what they were doing, etc. And, uh, now, and that's Mr. what's Menendez, happening. This uh, statement that you make mirrors what Dr. Ozeal said you said, that you didn't think you were going to get caught, and you didn't think there was any way for you and your brother to uh, have to stand trial on this case. Isn't Objection that correct? Argumentative as to you. No, it doesn't mirror what Dr. Ozeal said in the slightest. I have nothing further at this time, really. Any redirect? No, 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 no All right, thank you. You may step down. This, this, uh, you may step down, sir. Thank you. <laughs>